the Ukraine. Yeah, my guest today on Life Talks with Ayo Fawale and the Wizard was born in the Ukraine. He's representing the Ukraine. He's an amazing guy. He's my friend, my colleague, my brother. Oleg in the studio. Come thank on. You, thank you, come thank on, you, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on, come on. You're welcome, man. It's good to have you. This thing's just, I can't even see you, man. You're so big. What's this? Can I take this thing off? Do I need this thing on? Yeah, you can take it. Take this thing off. You're in my way, man. I can't see my brother. How you take this thing off? Just unscrew it. No. I'm about to just do that. Nah, I'm screwed. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Keep no, you're good, man. I don't I'm want good. that. I don't want my. I can't see you. What, this? Yeah. Here? Can we start again, man? No. No, that's fine. This is technical stuff. This is good. I like that beginning. We could, if you want to edit that the bit out with a thing, you can edit it out. No, oh, I, like it, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it because we're the thing about British people. We're more chilled out than Ukrainians. Ukrainians are very thin. Like they told me, they said if you're going to a podcast, make sure you wear nice and stuff like that. I wanted to wear my own stuff. Like, no, you're gonna have to. Ch- yeah, I need to look professional. I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll look professional for you. Yeah, there's levels. Yeah, yeah. There's but, nothing. but British people, they're more, we're more chilled out, man. I would yeah. love to do my my content in in British, you know, English language, right? But I couldn't do it because a lot of Ukrainians do not understand uh, English language you know yeah so I I speak Ukrainian to uh-huh. them even though my Ukrainian is terrible because I when I came here uh-huh. um, when I came here I I established myself in North London and North yeah. London back then 20 25 years ago was dominated by Turkish and the black people and I uh-huh. took the culture to myself I don't even speak proper English as well I still got an accent if I spoke on the phone to you you'd be thinking I'm a black man because that's yeah. the last time I had that yeah. I went to my first job when I was 18 years old and I, I spoke on the phone and the guy goes where are you from and I said I'm I'm Ukrainian <laughs> and he's like and you thought I was a black man he's like wow yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but there's nothing wrong with it I mean I know through conversations we had that you you really appreciate the stuff you're saying. So I don't know what to get 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 it, get it mixed up. Yeah. That that um the levels of of correctness and being dressed in a certain way yeah. and carrying yourself in a certain way. There's regality to that, yeah. do you know. And it's if if we here in London, some of us in London, not everyone, have thrown that to the curb. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. But I love the fact that you've come like yeah, smart. Nice it's it's good. It's, it's it's um what's the, what's the thing? What's the saying? You can be never. You can never be too dressed up. You know, mm. other people can be dressed up. But you can never be too too dressed up. You know, mm. and it's good to 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 construe a, a air of of what's the word? You know, when you're dressed properly, what's the word? You know, it's not success. Attire. It's attire. Your, your attire has to be correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you have to, it has to be correct. Yeah, absolutely. So you're born in Ukraine. Yeah. You see, you mentioned being here for over twenty years. What's, what? How old are you? So I'm thirty one. Okay. Um, I was born in Ukraine in 91. Um, That's the time when uh, Soviet Union broke down. As you know, it broke down into 15 different republics. Bro, um, bro, listen, Oleg, I'm just going to say this to you now, right? These podcasts educate me all the time. This is an education for me. Although I am a human being on the planet with access to news, internet, and so on and so forth, a lot of the time I don't get this information because I'm either living in a bubble, I'm going through what I'm going through in life. And I do remember the the... Berlin Wall coming down. I remember yeah, that in my 19, time. 1989. Yeah, see, 1989. But what you're talking about, even though it was going on while I was here, I don't know what I was going through at the time, so I may have been aware of it. Which we're going to chop up the Ukraine war and what's yeah, going on yeah. over there, because even I'm aware of that, what's going on now as well. Mm. I'm not really aware of what's going on, you know? Because I've got my own pantomimes, more things going on in my life as well. And then there's the whole, um, some human, well, human beings are selfish. You think about what's right in front of you as well, just to be honest, put it, put it right in front, put it out there. So some things I don't know about. So what you're telling me, this is just an education for me. So mm. break down a bit of that, go into a bit of the history of that, what was happening in 1991 with the breakdown of the Soviet Union and sure. how it impacted you and how it impacted Ukraine and everything sure. else. Sure, so when 90, in 1991, when the Soviet Union broke down, the reason why it broke down is because Gorbachev, in, uh, when he became in power in he became to do reformation right for the communists so uh, they um, he wanted the east to kind of open up to the west to the capitalism uh, world he wanted to kind of let them live the kind of life that in the West to live, you know, have nice cars, um, um, you know, cap- capitalism, uh, money as well, not even have standards and so forth. So, what, but what he did is that he opened it too soon and too quickly. And that's why it collapsed because um, a lot of people got involved, infiltrated into the system and the system couldn't handle it, right? And the system was also in debt as well. Remember in Cold War, um, what the major thing was involved is between uh, the communist power and the um, capitalist power, who's the dominant uh, force in the world, right? They were always competing. That's why you have seen in, 
in Africa uh, in the 1980s and 1990s, there was a lot of um, um, all these conflicts going on it's because one party was supporting one party, eliminating one party, installing a uh, uh, thing. So wait a minute, let me stop you. What you're saying, like you had the communists supporting in, in, in one in one given country, communists supporting one side right, and the capitalists North, or whatever. North Korea. Like, and then going in like, against each other, go um, on. Like, I, um, so, uh, North Korea and South Korea. Yeah. North Korea used to be one country. Yeah. South Korea is um, was um, uh, helped by the Americans and then North Korea was supported by the Soviet Union. Okay. Look at China, for instance, well, why, why did it become, it, it could have become a democracy, it could have become whatever the, the state is, but it became a communism thing as well. Communist right? country, yeah. There's a reason, because obviously there was infiltration of um, communism everywhere. It was dominant force. Anyways, when it broke down in... So I'm going to ask you, sorry, Ali. Yeah, no, that's right. Because you talk fast, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm getting I'm getting all of it, almost all of it. But just slow down just a little down bit. Because yeah. so we couldn't we couldn't really eat and digest the information okay. you're giving us. Go on. So, 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 um, so yeah, when the Soviet Union broke down in 91, and it broke down to 15 different countries. So that's why you have um, oh. Latvia, Lithuania, you have the Baltic States, you have Estonia, you have Ukraine, you have Georgia. Wow. Um, you have, um, who else was there? Um, Hungary was involved as well. Um, Poland was uh, uh, involved as well. Um, all these countries, they broke down. That's what that's why they have their own ethnicity, their own backgrounds and so forth. Yes, Russia was dominant as a um, major uh, con um, language to speak in. That's why, um, was it, 10 years ago, one of the top five countries that you can speak is English, as you know, it's international. You had uh, the French, the Spanish, um, you have another, you had Chinese and you had Russian. And that's why a lot of Ukrainians and other, even Polish, uh, a few a uh, few member of Polish people that can speak Russian. That's why a lot of people say to me, "Hey, his guy, he's from Georgia. How how how, how comes only he can speak Russian?" I mean, mm. that, that was years ago. It's because a lot of those fifteen uh, republics that fell apart, they all knew that one common language, you know, so knew that Russian. Now it's that's bit, interesting. Now it's a bit of a different story because a lot of Ukrainians refuse to speak Russian because obviously Russia has invaded Ukraine and Ukraine Ukraine has a you know, very interesting uh, history is that they've always wanted to be independent and and back this was centuries uh, century ago. Uh, um, there was a Polish Empire and there was a Swedish Empire or Lithuanian Empire. They mm. all wanted uh, Ukrainian land. Back then, um, life was a bit different then. You know, people, if I had war with you, that means I'll cut ties, everything with you. I'll never trade with you. Now you can't do that. If I'm if I'm having war with you and Chris is having trade with you, I can't say to Chris, do not trade with him because you cannot do that right now because he's dependent on his economy. You're dependent on your economy as well. That's why, um, unfortunately, to say that Europe is still buying uh, Russian gas, or how it is. Even small quantities, but it's still buying because if if it stopped completely it will be up i mean the wars i mean especially the uprise right now in the british community and in europe would be massive you know so let me because like yeah you guys you've got you said a lot in a little yeah. space of time like, and i'm soaking it up i already feel so educated she had the 15 countries that broke down from the soviet union um you talk about trading mm. the trading thing's interesting for me so before prior to certain things you people would say oh, if you're trading with him that's it. We're at war now. Don't trade with them. You can't. Yeah, you can, yeah. Now, because of the economies, people are still yeah. having to do business because it, it helps the economy keep keep, keep going. We're interconnected. Um, I think about it. Um, I watched a um, a black girl on TikTok. I think she's quite famous on this. And she said um, how we are all interconnected. She said this war between Russia and Ukraine is so... Think about it. Russia is very known for its energy. You know, it's got gas, it's got oil, it's got... It's basically uh, called a gasoline country, right? Plus it's got loads of... Mass, it's got massive lands as well. Um, Ukraine is now... Everyone knows what Ukraine is. Ukraine has sunflower, has food, whatever the case is. Just because we were trading to Europe when we were selling uh, the food in front, they just put a label European, right? And people think here, when by the time it got here, they will think, ah, oh, it's from Italy, it's from Bulgaria. It's Europe, yeah. But it was actually from Ukraine because it was much cheaper as well. Because remember... The, remember the pound and the dollar is much more current so currency wise it's higher so think about it if higher, I got, than, higher than Ukrainian money so if I got pound what here, is Ukrainian money? Hrivni so sorry? It, Hrivni 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 yeah that's Hrivni. it Hrivni. Hrivni so I think about one you have to slow down from me all the so, I'm trying to keep up with you <laughs> go on so, so I think about like uh, if I got one pound here in Ukraine it's Hrivni 40 Hrivni yeah so for 40 Hrivni you can buy so I think it's, you bought me Red Bull just now right in Hrivni you can probably buy six packets of Red Bull, Red Bull. For what? For the price of one? For the price of one. You know, so instead wow. of you bought me one can, you can get six cans in Ukraine. I'm just getting, giving you a rough thing, okay. thing as well. So think about if I'm if I was going to trade uh, in Ukraine um, or you're trading with me in Ukraine, right? And you want to buy certain things, right? You can buy loads of cargos for me, which is for cheaper price. If you yeah. don't understand, yeah, yeah, quantity yeah, yeah. wise, and I sell it to you. So I think um, the whole world realized that what Ukraine is on the map, obviously it realized because remember, um, we are fighting Russia. Russia is a superpower. Now, why is it called a superpower? It's because of nuclear weapons. 
and it's got massive dominance in the world as well. Remember, it's one of the top five countries that speak worldwide as to do business as well. That's what I was going to get into that as well, yeah, yeah the language. The language, language massive in a dominance as well. Plus history as well. It used to be called the Russian Empire. You had the Tsars, you had the kings and queens until Lenin came on, the Communist Party came in, uh, shot them, uh, killed the party. That's why they only have royalty. Bro, you're going too fast for me. So wait a minute, let's go. So, so you had, because this is education for me, even though I knew about it. So you had the Tsars, you had like real families yeah. running... Russia, yeah, like yeah. we had a lot of different countries. Exactly. And then you said Leningrad. Uh, Lenin. Uh, Lenin. 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 You know Stalin. You know Stalin. Stalin, yeah. So he was a dictator before him was Lenin. He was a dictator Lenin. as well. Okay. He killed the royal family. Okay. He just there was a coup, so he was that's, overthrown. That's it. Bit like the French Revolution. Exactly. Just murdered them. There was no point of having a thing, sir, because ninety uh, percent of the Russian citizens back then, as a Russian empire, were poor peasants. You know, and it's like the French Revolution. As far exactly. as I know, as far as I know, I don't know much about exactly. it. Exactly. And they didn't want that, and, uh, and they wanted better life. And the reason, uh, reality, if you didn't know this, communism was supposed to work on the capitalist side. Now, the reason why it worked on the communism, especially in the East and Russian and that, is because the peasant were how can I say, um, gave tortured for so many so many years uh, hundreds or hundreds of years ago um, in the Soviet Union in Soviet uh, in, in this Soviet is the, this even is the Russian the Empire as well there were um uh, uh, listen, um, what's the best way to think? Um, there was a law called serfdom. Now, um, serfdom. Serfdom. Now, serfdom is uh, it's the and it's a law passed it's, across across the whole of the Soviet Union. No, no, no. Before that, is in, in Russian uh, Russian Empire. Uh, serfdom means. Is, One minute. Let me stop you. So, it was the the Russian Empire now? Was the, the Russian Empire prior to the Soviet Union? Was the Russian Empire in charge of all these fifteen countries? Still, was it just all? No, it, it was, was just one it, block. It, it was, it was it, bigger. It was bigger. Okay. It was bigger. And Do you care to name any other? Do you know any, any other part of the Russian Empire back then? I don't know. Uh, out of my head, I wouldn't. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Or maybe Soviet Union was much bigger than uh, Russian, Russian Empire, Empire. but it, oh. it was huge. Okay. You know the size of Russia. Russia is still a massive country. It's the biggest country in the world. Let me. Whoa, 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 whoa! I want to ask you this now. Yeah. I'm. I'm like we've been sold a lot of stuff. This isn't a a, a, a direct attack at you, but I personally believe Africa is the biggest place Africa in the world. Africa is a continent. My man. Africa as a country. My man, my man. Now, for Africa was united, if everyone in Africa, all the countries in, the, in Africa said, you know what, we want to be in one block as a country. Yeah. Now, that would be extremely difficult to do, For uh, first of all, to unite yeah. everyone. You know how it is even hard to do a little, uh, where we work together, how to unite those guys together. Yeah. To unite the whole country together, especially, remember, there's religion involved as well. But all these things were you. All these things were used to divide mm. originally, because Africa was unified before. The same way it was used, Soviet Union was unified, and it's been it's been divided through through p p personal gain. I would say, individuals' personal gain across the across the board, which is what's going on right now as well with Putin. It's, it's individuals, and those individuals might not just, just be Putin, but the Russians and the people there. That's what all this for me. That's what most wars are about: personal mm. gain. Do you know what I mean? Or changing things up. Yeah, go on, sorry, because I just think, look, the, the whole ge geographical thing about Africa. I, just, I know, uh, Af no, no, Africa, Africa is actually uh, two, two and a half times bigger than Russia. It's about 30. Pretty shit, give me three. It's about, uh, 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 it's, it's about, let it be known. It's about 32,000 uh, kilometers uh, Russia massive. Is, is in the continent of Europe. Uh, Russia is half, so Russia is part of Europe and part of Asia because it's so massive. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that, yeah. No. That's why. Um, Which mic am I on? One, two. Um, that's why uh, when you know when we talk about here, they talk about um, this. This is um, I've been told this by some intellectuals and stuff like that. They said to me, "This is the reason why we, in, in the West we make a thought. We we say, oh, the Russia is, economy is weaker than the, the West. The reason why is because we work out the um, economy in the West very differently how they work in the, in in the, in, um, in, Asia, in Asia in, in, in Russia Asia, as well. Yeah. The economy how they structured is very different to our economy here. How? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But that's the way the, the sources that tell me as well. So another thing is what you have to understand what's going on in this war. This is this is very interesting. It's because we never get taught this as well. We only see what the news tells us. Um, you have to understand that in the West is about 700 million people live. Right. 700 mm. million. Right. In in Asia, there's about 6.8 billion people live there. That's massive. You know, Asia's rising. You know, China's rising. Why um, also think about it? Why is China uh, not condemning this war, not saying anything? Also, why Taiwan is so important? Taiwan has a lot of minerals that the Chinese want and also the Americans want as well. So Taiwan now, talking about Taiwan, Taiwan isn't part of China, is it? Well, uh, Chinese think it's part of China because that's in, not, no, in their but territory. Te but I understand what you're saying, but there's a, technically there's a, there's a 
battle going on over that. It's like Taiwan doesn't conform to the Chinese laws and stuff like that. I'm, I believe it's, it is it is separate at the moment, right? <laughs> yeah, separate because obviously yeah. there's um there's not land, but it's also the sea and that Taiwan is on. It's like um a country like UK. It's, it's an island. Yeah, exactly. But they they they're blocking and um like I said, I don't know much, I know a little bit, but a lot of things come from Taiwan. Like you're saying, there's a lot Micro, of minerals. Microchips. So this is like you know you've you ever heard that saying made in Taiwan. Yeah. Like a lot of things are made in Taiwan. Yeah. Like like and it's been, I've been like, hearing that for years, yeah. years and years and years. So this is the reason for the battle for this particular place. I think, I think about I right now what's going on in the world. Uh, if you think about it, I don't really watch the BBC news or any any of these news any side to be honest mm. because there's a lot of uh, bias going on. I do listen to a lot of intellectuals. Uh, people on YouTube. I like to listen to John uh, John Meyer. He's a um, Chicago professor. He's into a lot of all these um, how politics work in the world, international mm. politics. Mm. A lot of intellectual people. They talk on. They debate amongst each other, and they really talk about certain theories and so forth. And uh, they talk about resources right now. Think about it. Uh, we were all talking about a year ago about. Uh, green energy blah 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 this and that no one's really talking about it because think about it to create green energy all these foss all these um uh, companies that are making money from fossil fuels yeah then you need to use Stop fossil fuels to make a thing no one's going to do it because it's billions and billions um a lot of companies are already making a lot of money from oil gas whatever they made fortunes and stuff for like that but nobody wants to um update and really think about listen the humanity look look, look what's going on in the world honestly reality look at the world you see uh you see wars ukraine is not the only war there's 16 other uh, uh, countries in a, in a conflict that's going on. Give me uh, a give me a free. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, thank you for letting it be known. There's, uh, there's 16 different uh, the continent going on right now. There's we're 16 talk- wars right yeah, now. Yeah, 16 wars. So first of all, name them. Right now, you know, one one of them is, is Sudan. We're, we're talking about Sudan a yeah. lot uh, right yeah. now. Uh, two, uh, we also talking about Russia and Ukraine. Why Russia and Ukraine? Why, why well, name it? some more of the wars before we go into this. Please. Well, we got uh, in Africa. We got saying uh, t- I think two different uh, conflicts going on. There's a conflict going on in Venezuela. There's um, a conflict that may happen or maybe maybe not. It's coming to the edges between China and America, as we know, t- towards Taiwan. Mm. Uh, there's one in Israel. There's one in uh, Japan as well. Japan wants to have another conflict with Russia when it comes to those islands that's gone um, on on the edge. To be honest, Russia has enough land as it is. I don't know why it needs those little islands. Just give it to Japan mm. as it is. But mm. we leave it the way it is. Um, also, there's remember Mexico has different conflicts between um, um, America, US. Yeah. U- US uh, remember Canada as well has uh, problems with uh, with America. Uh, but when it comes to serious, like when I when I'm talking about conflicts as in wars and stuff like that, I think a lot of them is going on on part, yeah. on part of Africa. Africa. Ah. Africa will always be famed because remember Africa is a beautiful country, it has a lot of resources, but people still want resources. And in this world, it's about resources. The, the person or the country that has the most resources wins at the end of the day, you know, and um, unfortunately- And that instability creates it, creates remember, an opportunity it, to go in and take stuff. But then again, also remember, think about instability is, uh, is a great thing for entrepreneurial and capitalist uh, side. Think about whenever there's a problem and you, if when there's a problem, you can fix it. When you can fix it, you can make money out of it. Yeah, that's you what know? I'm saying. Instability, instability means we exactly. can make money. It's, it's, and you can go in and steal stuff as well. There's so much going on. You can go under the cloak of, cloak of I'm coming to help, I'm coming to fix. Massive. With this hand, you're stealing with the other hand. Of course. Of course. Yeah, it's sad. I don't know why humans are like that. I don't know why been, he was like been this, going man. On for generations. I think if you're if you're a Christian, if you read the Bible, it says proof the thing that when a man and a woman disobeyed God and ate the fruit of the tree, and they disobeyed God, and God said, God said, I will make your life hard and miserable because you chose the life that you chose, isn't it? If you now you chose the life, do you, if if you think you can do it without me, without God that can guide you, yeah. this is the life that you live. And He's obviously given us a choice now. Are you going to choose what you're choosing for thousands of years? You've been killing each other, you've been dominating each other. Blah, blah 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 or do you mm. want to choose me mm. you know so let's go back to 1991 mm. you was born in 91 man i was born in 91 yeah 1991 you was born into a beautiful family you got brothers and sisters break it down for me okay so break it down my dad uh my dad and my mom met in um our first of uh first uh, sight of love um, oh, love at first sight, yeah. First of all, sight. Oh, yeah. that's nice. That's um, nice. And they still with us. Yeah, they're still together. They've been, they've been together for what, what thirty-two fantastic. years. Fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic. That's nice. That's uh, nice. That's I got nice. stories to tell you about my dad when it comes to marriage life, man. I tell yeah, you, we'll have a couple of them a bit later on. <laughs> Why not? Go um, on. Uh, so yeah, I was born in ninety-one, June the twenty-ninth. A uh, year and three months later, my two brothers were born, twins. Uh, oh wow, Vlad yeah. and uh, Vlad and Victor. Um, my dad uh, was a very intelligent, intelligent man. Um, he always, he's already knew English. He already knew English language. Um, uh, by profession, he is a, um, a computer engineer. 
So okay. when it comes to computers, he's a master. It's it's the brains. Um, he's got, uh, yes. got the brains. Yeah. He's the brains. Uh, but he couldn't find a job at that time. And obviously there was a lot of corruption going on. We lived at the village. We had um, a lot of land. My grandma, uh, because of Soviet Union, anyone that used to live on, uh, live or work on lands um, by government, they uh, they were allowed to give, um, the government would give you a plot of land. Now that plot of land over there, you can use it for your own consumption, right? Uh, we had cows, we had chickens, we had horses. We, I, mean, I mean, we had everything, but we were poor. Think about it. we were living in Ukraine on a on one of the richest soils in the planet, and but we were poor. We couldn't buy food in in a, in shops. We couldn't buy clothes because the country was going in such a turmoil. You know, there was no trading with other countries because the country was trying to form a form who it is or whatever. Um, so, but then even in that poorness, you're saying you've got chickens and cows and you're planting we stuff had, and growing stuff. You had food and sustenance. We had the basics, right? But we, we had the basics, but we weren't, um, how can I say, it was certain products it was difficult um, to to buy. Uh, sometimes like even bread, you have to make it on your own. Remember to yeah, make that was, bread. You think that was good? That was, no, no, that was a good thing. But remember, it's time consuming as well. I mean, at that time, that's the way my parents tell me. It wasn't now how I think. I think about now, I think everything, what I have now, I'm thinking, wow, that's a great thing. I wish I, wish I went to the village. I wish I could do this, 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 this. Yeah, this. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like right now, you, you wish you could have that time to like to, to make the bread let it ferment let it grow but, but have, but slowly have, but, enjoy it but i remember a time has passed we've become more knowledgeable we become more dependent on technology look at the technology we have now as well if i don't know anything i take on my phone and i look up my phone and google it's a bad thing though isn't it but, well it's a good thing but it's also a bad thing because as time goes as we do things faster we become more depressed have you noticed that we like now if i want something i buy something from amazon buy now because amazon has all my credit cards because i believe amazon and i pay prime i've got all my credit cards no buy value now. to it but i don't value it anymore no value to it you listen know? Like i'm saying as a kid yeah we had this thing we know argos mm. argos they've always they always used to have a catalog like a big old book big old book catalog and as a kid you never really got much toys you went out you played dumb rights, whatever but at the back of the argos book there'll be like 10 pages of toys and Rather than getting the toy, me and my cousins and what we what we used to like, we used to look at them and say, oh, I don't know that, I want that, I want that. And That's you were circling, right? And we were circling, it's the I would do the same thing. You got me, you knew, you knew yeah, the yeah, food yeah. was coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope this sounds yeah, all right. Yeah. Listen to this, please, because I don't know if it sounds all right. I'll be hearing some feedback and stuff. But yeah, you would circle it and you'd be happy as Larry. You wouldn't necessarily have to get that present. Like the, the, the dream of getting that present, right? And then when Christmas would come, you might not get anything that you picked, but you'd be so happy with what you got. You'd have like some, like now you wouldn't even think, what the hell is this? Like scale electric toys that don't really do much. They yeah, go in one direction yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But we were happy. We're happy with the simplest things. Do you know what I mean? And those times were, it, I just, those times were times. I mean, you look around now, you look at what's going on and the yeah. value of stuff and the people, the way people value stuff. And that's the whole space. I want it now. Oh, I've got it now. I don't really want it. Well, what's next? Everyone's like, what's next? What's next? Rather than actually enjoying yeah, yeah. the thing that they, there's no weight and there's no patience. There's no value for anything, like you said. Sure. Please go on. It's true because um, if, if, if. In the Ukraine, you yeah, said. So my brothers were born in 92, um, living to 95. My, I remember I was five years old. My my dad and my mom went to Greece. You're five when your brothers were born? Yeah, so that, yeah. No, no. My, I was I was one one in th uh, one year and three months. My brothers were born, so I'm okay. a year and three months older than my brothers. Um, Are they and big like you? Uh, well, I'm the, I'm the tallest, the biggest. Uh, but I got one of my brothers that's building muscle at the moment. And yeah. what's what's the name? Vladen. Uh, I got Vladen Victor. Vlad and Victor. Yeah, very right. serious. Good thing. They look. The Big names up. are like. They're like. Um, they're like. Wait. Uh, Evan Drago. And I must break you. Yeah. Those kind yeah, of, yeah, those yeah, words, I must break you. Vlad and Victor. Big up yourself. God bless you. Thank you. Um. So in '95, I was what four? four uh, yeah, right. I was. I was. I was four years old. My parents decided to go to Greece. Uh, to nice. make to make some money. You know, and um. They, they arrived and I tell you, we were the richest in our village that time. Uh, they uh, they digged up a well because what we used to do before, we never had um, central heating at home back then. Uh, toilet was outside. Of course, you know, like a lot of countries, little yeah. cabinet and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, they used to have a toilet outside here. Yeah, so as well. we, at least we had a cabinet. I know some people had a, um, even till now, that they, what they would do, take an umbrella with, with them, they'll take a newspaper underneath of it and they'll go to the garden, dig up a little hole, just sit, they do the business, use the paper that will do it and just wipe it, and that's it. You know, I, can't, I can't believe some people live the way they are living now. Anyways, um, do you think that's bad or good? <laughs> I think it's, it's natural. But if you're doing it in a garden and you're, I don't know, if you're doing some, I don't know, if you're a neighbor, and let's say I'm doing, I'm, I'm picking up gar, um, vegetables <laughs> and you're doing it in a, in, in a wild thing and when I can see it, that's come on. Like. Yeah, but I mean, like the, the, the excrement, mm. 
is returned back into the land and it helps fertilise the land technically. Like we're, we're, we're flushing our shit and we don't know where it's going. It's and it's piling up somewhere. It's I, I think the, what you said is better. No one wants to do it, but I think I... No, no, I, I agree with you, but I think it will be the best way to do, I don't know, some sort of a heart where you, it comes out and it goes into the ground and, you know, it's nice. To, I mean, it's a problem. Look, there's a problem there. I think someone can actually create and make something for uh, to do with that innovation. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but anyways, in uh, 95, my parents decided to go to Greece to make some money. They come back. Um, they made a well. They made a nice um, ground. They've they've built the house up and around VHS, we had three, three, um, three TVs, you know, those uh, we had a white TV. I couldn't believe a white TV. We had a white fridge. I've never seen that in my life. And uh, I remember people came over to our house um, to watch King Kong. You know, black and white King Kong. Kong. Yeah, 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 on, yeah, our, yeah. on our TV set. Yeah, there was yeah, a, yeah. You know, yeah. you see uh, videos in Africa where you got a um, gathering and someone's yeah. holding an antenna or something. Yeah. Exactly that's how I've, I remember I've been, as well. I've, I've been to places like that. Uh, like, it's not even just like, it's just, just got, there's like one central TV. It's not because life is about living off the line and really enjoy yourself but mm. that is that is a novelty and it was a it was it was something that was new however like people gather around it like i i've got memories of football games people gather around football games i still and in africa ukraine south america america certain american countries you know like asia as well there's places where they'll be holding antenna you move you move do you know what i mean the same thing's happening up to today some places but go on sorry but it was it was uh you know looking at it now it's such a fascinating memory to have and you appreciate things now i think you appreciate more now because the things that you've gone through in life and when you and you have these memories you're like wow this is amazing and then you can connect with someone else when someone else got that connection and said that this is what i'm through and you say like yeah i've went through and people say people look at me like what in ukraine you really went through that thing like some people don't believe me like what in Sense ukraine community like Sense you know community. yeah anyways um so 95 everything came down and then my dad stayed there for a bit in ukraine and he decided to let me ask you something about yeah. you what was you like when you was that young? When you were seeing these things, because we're reflecting back on it. But when you were seeing these things, you, what kind of child was you? Was you a tenacious child? Was you a, was you a was, satisfied uh, child? Was you how was you to your little brothers? Was you encouraging? Was you like I want to hear now to taking my time? I want to find no, out about Oh, like, my dad. My dad wasn't always around. My dad was always traveling. Who was always trying to find a better life for us. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do remember my dad beating me. You know, they say black. Uh, they say black kids get beaten. <laughs> my, my dad would get uh, a belt and whoop me as well um, with slippers, whatever. <laughs> as possible but a belt especially uh, a belt um, anyways I'll go further than that um, I was a uh, I was a naughty kid because my dad wasn't always around my dad was not there to always discipline me um, uh, my mom my mom and my grandma were very um, like I said you know women they have this tendency to to the kids that have more um, they can take more patience dad's my dad didn't have that patience. I was a very um, naughty kid when I was growing up. I used to do some stupid things, man, I remember. Okay. That's uh, that's a sign of intelligence. Yeah. We're going like what? Uh, for instance, I remember uh, two older kids. I had, um, um, I don't know if I want to say this, but I had two older you kids. You have to. It's not have to tell it. Any story you want. I had two older kids that were, one was three years old. So I was seven. Uh, one was three years older than me. So you must have been uh, what, eight, nine, ten. Another one was 13 years old. I remember my girls were bathing um uh, one time they were bathing outside <laughs> outside there was like this massive um massive pipe with water and stuff like that uh. I said, hey, look, watch, watch the girls. And then one of the girls uh, caught me. Boy, man, I got beat from those girls, man. Well, oh, so they saw you watching? Yeah, the, the girls caught me, man. They beat the hell and out of me, man. I came, shot. I came home with red. My, my grandma said, what happened to? What happened? I was so quiet, I, could, I couldn't tell. But I, I, how old was you again? I was seven years so old. Oh, yeah. Mm. When, you, when you saw these girls naked, yeah, mm. like, before they beat you. <laughs> What was your thoughts? You know that you see that's something you see in the movie. You know that little kid hiding, watching the girls in the movie. Yeah, yeah. What was your? <laughs> was you grinning like that? Was like. <laughs> no, I was just watching. I was amazed because I've never, I've never seen naked women uh, at that at, at, at that point. Yeah, yeah, at that age, you know, I was, I was looking. At, I was enjoying while I was watching, and one of the girls saw me. Man, boy, she grabbed me. She gave me what whoops because, the, <laughs> listen, the girls, the girls wasn't. Did she get dressed first, huh? Did she get dressed first before she beat you? Probably, she probably put a towel next to her and then she saw me. I mean, listen, the only thing I remember, I remember getting the beats. I remember the real beats. <laughs> remember what you saw at the beats? Oh, yeah. my days. I, I, I learned my lesson from there. Never watch women naked. <laughs> yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, but there's loads, of, uh, there's loads of issues I've done when I was a little kid. I burnt a house on fire. Um, I saw my grandma leave matches on the window. I took it and the house that was next... Um, um, Next to it was next to dry, um, dry kindling wood, whatever. Uh, what some, forest? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, um, 
Straw? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, sh- straws, but from wheat. Yeah, yeah, straw. Yeah, yeah, straw. Yeah, bells of hay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, bells of hay. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I saw. So and I thought, let me light in it. Boy, it lit up the whole house. Start button and the house that uh, had oh. it, it. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, the roof wasn't on metal or. Yeah, it was uh, probably the hay as well. Or yeah, it was like metal. Wood. Boom. Oh my days. My grandma knew it was me. She never said we kept quiet. She said, "Boy, your father, who's in UK right now, that's about four thousand dollars for that house." He has to send up money to pay that for the house. The pay for it. No, 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 no. Because the the lady, the lady do, that died, she had no ancestors to carry on a the thing. They scrapped it. Wow, you lucky man. Very, 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 very lucky. Yeah. Man. But anyways, I was very naughty. I'm learning more about you. Yeah, it. very, no. very. <laughs> I was very naughty. And anyways, um, I remember my dad. Um, uh, my dad went to UK for the first time. Now yeah. the reason why my dad wanted uh, he came to UK is because in <laughs> American Dream, everyone wanted to go to UK from UK. Go Same to as Nigeria. Yeah. Same as Jamaica, Africa, Southern Caribbean countries as well. They think they, well, we think the, the streets are paved with gold. Yeah, that's 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 the that problem. Was a myth that was told. Exactly, but the gold and the, the good soil was in your country and my country. But you know why? It's because of the American movies. You know those yellow cars, and you see those things. That's what we saw. We're like, oh, we want to go to America as well. So my dad's capitalism. My, yeah, cap, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my dad decides to go to UK in '97. He knew the English language. Um, he. He something he saw interesting things. Just I, I'm assuming that even Nigerians saw this, um, a family saw as well. Is that what my dad saw? He saw other Ukrainians that have been here before him. Um, they would leave the kids, the wives back home. They start meeting other women here, drinking, partying. Even though they were selling send, sending money back home, two hundred pounds or two hundred dollars in Ukraine. That was a lot of money back then. A lot of money. Um, I remember sending two hundred quid back in Ukraine. It would be like ten thousand pounds now. I mean, that's a lot of money right now. Um, and then my dad said, you know what? I can't do it myself. Let me get m- your mom. And he took my mom to UK. My mom worked for six months. He left us with our grandparents. Now I was even more naughty because now both of my parents are gone, right? And my pe- my grandparents can't take Mischievous, me. Mischievous, didn't? Would you say you acted that? Because I know kids, you act out, you know. Like, but listen, you know, you're saying naughty. The, be mischief and stuff like that and getting this stuff is a sign of intelligence yeah, but you know that like, curiosity yeah because I wasn't I wasn't concentrating in school um, I was kind of a bit rebellious to my uh, my grandparents my grandparents carried on always saying listen wow your parents are overseas you know blah 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 but I never I never I remember I remember Christmas I remember you know the things that you said about Argos and stuff like that yeah my parents used to send me gifts back in these big uh, bags, as you know. Those uh, yeah. immigrants are bags, as you know. Uh, we know them. And they're very easy what, to... What bags? You know those uh, black and white uh, zip bags? We call them Ghana must go. See, everyone, you <laughs> call them immigrant bags. We call them Ghana must go bags. It's crazy how cultures are different. Yeah. But they're the same. It's nuts. Uh, it's nuts. Uh, go on. <laughs> so my parents, uh, I remember they sent us, man, this this was unbelievable because in Ukraine, we never used to have this. Lego, uh, cars on remote. There, w- there was no such thing in Eastern Europe back then. Now you have it. Now they have it even more than it is in UK. But back then there was crayons. I remember going to school. We had a chalk in black and white. That's it. When I came to school with different crayons, my teacher went ballistic. She's like, wow. Your teacher? Yeah, she went, wow. I can't believe there's different colors, you know? Um, 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 in Ukraine, what they do, they, the, the Christmas is very different to UK, right? Once you have Christmas, boom, everything finished. Da, 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 da. But in Ukraine, they celebrate for almost a month, right? I remember one of the things that do is that ch- children would dress up in different masks. I came with Lion King masks. There was no such thing as Lion King masks. I came with, you know, a scream, a Halloween thing. Yeah. My goodness, the kids went ballistic. I tell you, I was, I, I would say we were the richest people in, in our village. And we had two villages. My mom's village was a roughly maximum, I would say, 500 people. My dad's village was a lot bigger, 2,500 people. Excuse, and between each other, it's about 20 minutes walk. It was amazing. It's, uh, I felt good. I, back then, I felt incredible, you know, feeling that mm. power. And um, so my dad stayed with it, and then my my my, my grandpa started complaining, saying, duh, 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 duh. My, my my dad decided, you know what, I had enough enough. I see people playing around. Tell tells my mom Tanya. She said, Tanya, go to Ukraine. I'm gonna make I make passports. I'll make documents for you guys, and you can start making here. And then I remember, um, I was going to year two, and I must have went to year two and school uh, school. Uh, and two weeks into it, I remember my my mom says. Tomorrow we are going, and I didn't know what she meant. I thought she's she saying that we're going to a city like mm. we always do. Mm. I remember she dressed us nice, and I remember this really clearly. Um, uh, a car comes at night, picks us up. Uh, we go inside the car. We go to the second uh, um, another village. village. Um, we say goodbye to our grandparents, and the hugs that we gave it felt like hugs we were given for a long time, as in we will never see you again. That kind of hugs, and 
And uh, from there, we made a journey. They comprehended what was going on, yeah. but you, you I didn't know. I was yeah. too young. And I remember we were driving from Ukraine. We went to the borders to Poland. And from Poland, we stayed in a hotel. Let me tell you, we were wild, man. I've never seen an escalator before. I remember. Um, do, you, <laughs> do you do you know um, do you know the do you know coffee? You know the milks that you have. Those little thin. Man, yeah. I've never seen that in my life. I remember people leave them half empty. We would drink it. We would even oh. drink drink it. Oh man, we were we were wild. Um, escalators, <laughs> escalators going up and down. We were going up and down. I mean, I, we never see shit like that. We've never seen an airplane going. We were we were mental. I remember people said to me, uh, "What's the capital of Ukraine or Poland?" We will say uh, the the village that we're from. <laughs> we're from. People laugh at me. They, I mean, we yeah, were yeah, we were yeah. wild. You didn't know. You didn't know anything. So you was, it was everything was there for you to discover. Oh, so man. you're saying well, that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, man. Wow, was wild. Yeah, I was that's wild. Nice. I was wild, that's man. Nice. I felt like Maori, man. I was I was like Ma- we, Maori. We, yeah, Maori. Yeah, you're Maori. You know, Tars and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's where you were yeah, 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 yeah. Um, obviously now you know when people do ask me before I was kind of embarrassed to talk about it, but now in your show I can I can, I can I can express myself and tell you how I feel yeah, yeah, um, yeah, anyways yeah. Uh, we I remember we, we boarded the plane and I don't th- I don't think you remember this but uh, to a certain time they would allow you to see the captain our pilot and they don't do that no more Nah. I don't know if you know this They don't do that no more nah, they don't, they don't, Or maybe a certain request That you know someone Maybe do that But they don't do that no more I yeah. remember on a plane And we were so wild We couldn't be quiet stuff for that The stewardess asked my mom Said Would you be you, uh, you, um, British They said Do you mind miss uh, Can we um, ask your kids To see the pilot And my mom was shocked Because of the culture Of the English How they were So polite Okay. So polite, uh, so nice. We've never seen that because we were rough in Ukraine. Remember, if you get pushed in Ukraine, boom, that's a fight. There's no such thing as excuse me. I mean, Ukrainians are now learning. They're learning the culture, like excuse me, sir, or you know, could you pass me the salt? Ukrainians never do that. Could they'll just take the salt? You know, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, and um, I remember seeing the pilot. Oh my god, it was a, it was an, <laughs> it was amazing. Give me that salt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where the pepper, motherfucker? <laughs> Sorry. So, anyways, we we saw the pilot. I mean, it was so. I mean. I tell you for me it was outstanding because i've never seen anything like that in my life yeah. um anyways we arrived i remember we arrived in london and i see my dad i haven't seen my dad for two years and i was afraid of my dad i remember i remember the last time when i oh, saw you him should be. i remember the last time i saw him he gave me a beating and that's the way i remember him and my dad loved football i remember my dad in ukraine when i was when i was in ukraine he said he would always ask me hey watch the football da, da, da. now the reason why he was telling me is that maybe to get into sports and not to be a rebellious kid to my to his grand to his mom and dad uh. anyways we arrived to london and uh, my dad said oh you guys are here it was diff- it was very i remember my first time when i came here um it's obviously typical in london that it's cloudy it's rainy you know i obviously now i i What's know what's like in ukraine it's different. If it's summer, it's summer. If it's winter, it's cold. If it's um, if it's um, if it's winter, it snows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it snows, it snows. You know, it's not. And like when it's hot, it's hot. It's hot. But I'm going to say like Africa hot, but it's hot. Um. Anyways, we been Africa before. I've never. I'll, well, if I if you say Africa, I've been I've been to Egypt before. That's Africa. Yeah, that yeah, is that's Africa. Africa. That's that's, that's, that's the furthest I've been. That's Egypt. Africa. That's Africa. Beautiful. Loved it, man. Yeah, yeah. Loved it. It was Africa hot there. Oh man, it was nice, man. Yeah. Uh, definitely recommend anyone. If no one has been to Egypt, the reason why I went there is because it was my honeymoon, and two, it's because of the pyramids. I, I'm into nice. history. I've, yeah, I've no, I would like to see them. I've never seen them. I'd like. I mean, it's quite nostalgic. Lovely. It's a lot. Yeah. Crazy people, though, man. Crazy people. Do you All know, over the world. Make All sure, make world. sure you don't take pictures and stuff like that because they'll take it. They'll get a picture of themselves and they say, "Give me a pound." <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a hustle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. What's, what's the though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh, uh, so I come, I come to London. I remember my dad says, "Oh, well, you need to go back to school yeah. in here." I'm yeah. thinking, what? I, I didn't, I didn't, I like, I didn't like going to school in Ukraine. Now you ask me to go to school here, mm. and boy, my experience was different. I for the, uh, I remember the first time I seen a black person in my life. I've never seen black people in real life. Yeah. That was because exp- you mentioned black a lot in your thing and your association. I stuff. never, I never think. Um, so when I moved to to London first time, I moved to Highgate, and I went to Highgate uh, Primary School down there. Mm. And um, I remember my my mom. Um, I remember my mom said, um, "What is it?" Uh, my mom was. They were looking for accommodation at that time, and we moved to Highgate. We lived there for about six months. That's when we moved to Tottenham. Now, before we moved to Tottenham, I went to <laughs> Highgate. Sort of wow. Hi- I went to Highgate, and I, there was a lot of white kids. Uh, there yeah, was, yeah, yeah. There were some black people, uh, black kids. There was um, other. Nas- I've never seen other nationalities. I only seen them on TV, but seeing things on TV is very different in real life. Definitely. And, and another thing was very difficult for me: the language as well. I remember when they were singing um, uh, school programs in school. I couldn't sing, so I would just 
mime, you know. I'll be telling like I was singing. What was, age? Do you remember what age? Was I was that? seven, uh, seven going to eight years old in uh, in Highgate in Highgate Primary School. It was it was difficult experience for me because it was so new for me. Um, but I remember my dad saying to me one thing. He said to me, uh, "Kids, um, you guys are still young." Um, I remember I had two bro- uh, two brothers. Well, he said, "Vlad and Victor." Vlad and Victor. They said, um, "At home, you're going to speak Ukrainian." Um, outside you're going to speak the language that you're going to speak now the reason why he said that to me is because he's one thing he installed in me is that make sure you speak the mother tongue now what two reasons why number one is that maybe in the future you may decide to go to ukraine you need to speak with people maybe you have your kids whatever the case is and number two the reason why is because here in uk no matter what status you are in this country you can be a cleaner English, British people will say to you, hey, I know a guy, I know Alex that he speaks two, three languages. I've got a Polish guy here. Maybe he can speak that language. The more I do that for you as a favor, you will never forget. You say, hey, I've got a course coming up. I may give this to Alex so he can kind of build up his skills and carry on. That is one thing I've learned in UK that people here kind of move forward. They want the best for you as well. They want you to kind of grow. In Ukraine, there was not, 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 not such a thing unless you knew someone that would give you that opportunity. In UK, you got that opportunity at least. Now, obviously, it's a bit different because... A lot of things have changed in UK, as we both know. Around the world. Around, around the world. Around the world's got a lot smaller. People have got a lot more selfish. People are more, more abolitious. Everyone's more individual. But yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> there's, there's, I want to just um, reiterate what your dad taught. What's your dad's name? My dad's uh, Vladimir. Vladimir. Nah. Vladimir. Strong name. It's a strong name. Don't worry about Putin. Yeah, it's yeah. about your dad right now. So yeah, don't worry yeah. about the other guy. Vladimir's your dad. I want to um, commend him. Because making sure that you knew your mother tongue and uh, the language of the country that you're moving into, because yeah. it's imperative. The more you know, the more languages you know, the more barriers you break down. As the world's getting smaller, it's easy to communicate yeah. the more languages you know. That's a power to have, man. Yeah. And to teach your children and to understand, have that foresight to do that for your kids. So it's, it's a really good thing. It's a really, really, is, really good thing. And this is where I'm going to go further. Because you see, see, my dad moving in here, he started seeking for his own community now as well. Remember... When my parents moved in here, they were in the thirties, like me, like me right now in the thirties. They was, they still looked for some their own community, and there was not much many Ukrainian community Round and here. Home, yeah. Right. So I remember he went to church and um, he found his own community there. Now when he went inside the church, he found um, U- R- Ukrainians, Russians, Belarusians, um, Belarusians. He found other nationalities in the part of the Soviet Union when I broke down. But the only common ground. So if I spoke Ukrainian, you're from Georgia, you wouldn't understand what I'm saying. But the mm. only common gr- uh, language we both know. Russian. Russian, so he started yeah. speaking thin. One thing my dad instilled in me as well, he's um, he's a real believer in God as well. He never used to be, but he became a believer Christian. in God. Yeah, he became a Christian here in this country. I actually a Jehovah's Witness as well. That's why my dad is. Okay. And uh, I remember- a strong, strong factor in the Christian religion. Very, yeah. very, like, yeah. stern, straight. Yeah, so I remember going to one of their kingdom halls, that what they call, they don't call it a church. And I remember it wasn't a Ukrainian one, it was a Russian. And he gave me a Ukrainian Bible and he said to me, we're going to learn Russian. And I said, well, dad, you give me a Ukrainian Bible. It's very different. Da, da, da. He said, it's good to learn another language. I know you're learning English already, but we're going to learn another language, which is Russian, because it's very popular, blah, blah, blah. Telling you, Vladimir is a G. Yeah, so Tell we, him, if you watch this, Vladimir, you're a G. <laughs> well done. So I remember he taught me Russian uh, from reading, uh, writing. I remember at home, I, I would learn to a certain point. But you see, my dad was li- working on two different jobs as well. And he was trying his best. You know, it wasn't easy. Um, I know many people kind of believe that fantasy, which many Ukrainians still do believe that they think that life in Europe in uh, other countries is better than it is now. Everywhere, bro. Caribbean, yeah. Africa. I'm not sure about the Asian countries. I, don't, I haven't got no example of it personally myself, but mm. I know that in Caribbean Africa, if you're over here, they think you're living the life of pie. No, but you're not. It's not, man. You're it's not, it's, it's not as easy as you it, think it is, it's, mate. It's difficult, man. There's a lot of, uh, as you know, uh, wages can be high or low depending on your skill set, but also taxes as well. Remember, in our countries in Ukraine, like many Ukrainians are coming here now, I tell you, I give an idea. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe a lady sent me a message saying, "Hey, I got, I got taxed this month, twenty percent. How do I return that money back?" I couldn't believe she said. How do I get it back? How do I get that money back? Because they don't pay taxes back back home. I mean, some people do, but majority of people don't. If you get two million pounds, that means two two million dollars down there. That's two million dollars is yours. Wow. You know, it's it's a very different. Um, life oh. over there, you know. That's why, yeah. Go on. No, you go on. No, that's why. Go. That's why many Ukrainians say, "Wow!" Now they're realizing, "Wow!" They're saying, "Wow!" We live better life in Ukraine oh, than we are living. Shit. Than you are living oh. here in the UK. It's like that, and sometimes people need to see what it's like because they won't believe you. Yes. Tell them, no, I haven't. I'm, I remember I hearing something of a of a of a of a. I'm not gonna say what country it is. But it was a black nation. It might be Caribbean. It might be African. But someone went on TikTok. The cheeky blah. blah the cheeky person was like, listen, if you're sending money, don't send no £40 or no £50 no more. <laughs> I don't want no £40 or £50. I want 100 I want to. 
can you imagine the cheek of it? She said, don't bother sending it. It was a woman's voice. Well. Don't send it if you're not. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. You don't understand what people go through and stuff. Listen, um, because we've got limited time, mm-hmm. I want to cover a lot of things. So we're going to talk about, um, we're going to just talk about you as a youth. One more thing about youth, then we're going to start moving into mm. into other regions of the stuff you're doing because you're doing a lot of things. Yeah. And I, 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 I propose, which I proposed before, that I don't think this will be the sole interview that we do. Because I don't, there's not enough time to cover everything that you're yeah, doing yeah. and what's going on with you. And you're on a growth at the moment. You're growing as 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 literally under our eyes because you've started your own podcast mm-hmm. and you're you're growing now. You're probably on a second episode. So I want to bring you back when you've done like 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah, whatever episodes. And we're going to chop it up, yeah? Yeah, yeah, of course. But it is, yeah? I don't know if I'm wrong or right, yeah? In Ukraine, when the kids are ready to fight, they get dressed up in colours. And they go to the other schools and fight. it's a full on fight. Is that right? I'm not sure. I've I've never come across uh, that yet. Ah, see, I'm saying you know who told me? Yeah, mm. <laughs> um, I was speaking to a couple of other people. You know, your your um, you know, should we mention the guy on the computer and his brother? But someone told me about on they've looked to see it online and like they literally go when they're gonna have a fight. They're gonna they're not like how their kids do it. They have a they have a tear up, yeah. fifty cuffs and all that. A real full on every your yeah. school, my school, shoot. And it'll be cool afterwards, but they will go for it. Like, they will like, literally yeah, fight true, properly. True, like. It's true. It's oh, true. So you know about that stuff, yeah? It's true. It's true. You see, you have to remember, Ukraine is a massive country. Yeah. Um, it's three times bigger than UK. Um, just like in London, you have different um, areas. You have North London, South London, yeah. East London. They're all very different. Yeah. How they fight in South London, how they fight in North London is very different. Yeah. What happens in North London, what happens in South London, very different. Yeah, yeah. certain things are very similar, very different. Just the same in Ukraine as well. How they fight in in the um, west side of Ukraine, where those guys were saying, Maybe that that's how they fight. And maybe where I'm com- I'm come from the west side of Ukraine as well, but mm. not as far as them. They are okay. more closer to P- Polish side. I'm not, not as I'm kind of in the middle. Okay, maybe, maybe possible. So we leave that one alone. Yeah. So next question I want to ask you: not the Russian language. The breakdown of the Soviet Union. You know. Ah, uh, so you know, in do you do you think like? What do you think the ethos of Ukrainians are? Like, you know, like, because you're speaking a lot about um, black and other cultures. Do you think your culture is welcoming to everybody or it has it has a, it has has apprehensions about certain things? And going into the same from me said about seeing the stuff on TV about America and about things being paved like this. And we know like certain people are painted with certain color brushes, not to, not to, not no pun intended, but painted with black brushes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But I know you, innit? And I know humans, innit? There's good humans and bad humans. I don't, yeah, I know who you are. Like for me, it's so so far so good. And like I could say, I don't really see. Even though I do see color. I don't see color. Mm. I see humans. Me, I don't see. I see color, but I don't see color. I see human beings. Either you're good or you're bad. Either you're nice or not. I don't see sexuality. I see human beings. Either mm. you're good or you're bad. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It just depends what you. You're good or you're bad. It's good and bad and everything. How would you say the um, the narrative of Ukrainian people is? Because I don't want to call it, but a lot of Eastern European countries that I believe are just straight racist. Yeah. If you go there, it's the, the way they look at you, the way they treat you is totally different to anybody else. And it's just because of the colour of your skin or because maybe because of what they've seen and what the, the stereotypes and the and the stories that they believe and adhere to. Do you know? Please, what's your what's your opinion on that? I'm going to be honest like this. Um, um, I I grew up in North London, like, as I said before. I, I had no choice. Um, if I was growing up in East London, uh, where there was more Eastern Europeans, maybe it would have been different because I, I speak to many Ukrainians here in UK that lived here for a long time. Not as long as me, but they say to me, oh, I cannot live in certain areas. Like one of the things they say no to straight away is Brix- Brixton or South London. Yeah. We know there's a lot of black people live there. They yeah. say, no, we don't want to live in what they call it a category, which for me, I find it offensive. They call it a category. A category. I find it offensive because I said to them, listen, I am helping you and you know me. And North London is, there's a lot of black people. There's a lot of nationalities live there. I am them. You know, I I, I wouldn't say I represent the black community, but I do understand. I work with um, a lot of guys that I'm, I'm the only white guy in my in my team. But I don't see color. I don't really see color. Yeah, I, I, I understand where they're coming from. I understand the pain where they're coming from. I, I feel empath- um, uh, sympathy and empathy for them, but I, I would never understand the story as black people, what they went through, you know, the history and stuff like that. That's, that's why I keep saying to so many Ukrainians that lived there a long, long time, they have that respect because they went through a lot of challenges themselves. Because I think a lot of Ukrainians, don't get me wrong, they've never went through um, so many um, 
um, how can I say, different nationalities in one country. I mean, London. It's Lon ignorance, then, isn't it? Ignorance is another thing. Um, also, thinking that they are the best, uh, they are more smarter. You have, they, have, they have to realize that Ukrainians, I keep uh, reminding myself and I keep reminding Ukrainians, you have to understand that where were you in 98 or 90, 91, 92? The country was poor. You know, now you've developed, now a lot of countries have developed. Even in Africa and Sudan, you have poor kids, but they have a phone. You know, that's that's not, that it kind of shows you the kind of world we're living, right? And um, I think a lot of Ukrainians need to realize that if you really want to establish yourself here, you need to learn how to work with other cultures as well. You need to kind of push that arrogance or that selfishness that you have about you saying that you're better than someone else. You cannot live and you can never thrive in this country if you're only thinking about yourself and thinking about your own thing. Like even if even your own communities, I know certain people in this country that live in here for a long time, they only speak only one language, that language that they're speaking, but you will never grow. The reason why you're not growing is because you're not communicating with other nationalities. I've, I am the person I am now is because the people that I've been associating with myself and also where I've grew up as well. I'm proud that I live in North London. I'm not saying that I don't like living in North London. When I go to East London, I don't want to live in East London. That's that's me personally. I don't want to live in... I'm happy where I live in North London because... Diversity. It's my, yeah, diversity and everything. That's what makes London, London. And I think a lot of people why I live in London, yes, it's difficult. Life in London is difficult. But the reason why a lot of people love London is because of diversity. And I love to see other nationalities. When I go to Ukraine, last time I've been to Ukraine is in 2016 when Donald Trump was still in power. I went in 2016. <laughs> and let me tell you, my friend, I um I would to ask myself where are the black people are where where are the Chinese where wait, where, wait, wait, where, wait, where, where yeah where, where yeah. Are the Indians and the only time I only seen them is in big towns or in airports I, I wanted that I wanted that um I wanted to speak to someone integration in integration that that's exactly thing I wanted to speak I wanted thing because people from different countries they um. I don't know, people People are like in London, they kind of understand each other. I mean, other nationalities. And But when you go to a country that's fully, I don't know, fully white or fully black, it's very, it's, you find it kind of different. You think, where's the other nationality? Where, where are they gone? To me, it's like, I was born and raised in London, isn't it? Yeah. I'm Nigerian, through and through, but I'm a Londoner, through and through. Cockney as Cockney you can get, almost, yeah, like, yeah. without knowing all the rhyme. It's like, I don't like jelly deals, but hey, I eat cake and cuss. I eat a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, um, I feel blessed. That I don't. That my glasses are 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 not just just just. I can have. It doesn't matter who you are. I don't see color because that's mm. how I was brought up. I do. I was around all different nations, nationalities, colors. Greek. There was Greek people next to me. Asian people, Chinese, like whatever you name it. There was mm. there was a there was an example of different nationalities, and there was some good ones and some bad ones. There was, there was some positive ones, and some negative ones. But we was exposed in London, me personally, and some of my friends to all the different cultures and you could kind of take it or leave it. Yeah. And in school, they taught us a lot of stuff as well. So it enabled me to put that on the back burner and and get and really get my hands dirty, really get in and know someone without having, because some people wouldn't, they just don't get to know people because they, they've got this, these, they've got these shutters down and they've got these fingers. They come from places, they don't know nothing. Oh, black people. Oh, yeah, white yeah, people. Yeah. Oh, Eastern European people. Oh, Asian man. people. Oh, China, you know, like. They put it in boxes, man. Yeah. They put it in boxes so it's easier for them to judge you. And, and that's they don't the give problem. themselves a chance to actually enjoy, grow, be educated, yeah. like know certain things and live in this, this this is called life. He said life's hard. Life's supposed to be hard. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? The way it gets easier is when we can learn from each other's lessons. Yeah. Like the stuff you you, you was talking about in Ukraine, it, it brought me back to, to, to the simplicity of life. Yeah. Do you know like about making the bread and the stuff in, in, in the house and the, the village from here and there. And I think that um, the, the father that's running through you and the lessons you learn in Ukraine, the things you, the the, 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 the human being you are, mm. is what makes what you're doing so, so fundamental, so poignant, and which is why you're you're succeeding in what you're doing because of where your heart's at. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? You're patriotic to the to the fucking hilt. If any Ukraine is a question, and your patriot, pa patriotism, patriot, what's the word? Pa patriotism. Yeah. Nah, get the fuck out of here. I told you, your your patriot yeah. to, and I don't I don't know half the things you're doing online. But I know it doesn't come from the place of you wanting to be seen. You don't mind being seen. You want to be identified as a guy who's doing good things in Ukraine and linking people up. But it comes more from you want to do for your country, you want to do for the human beings and join them. Go on. But this is another thing as well, um, Ayo, is that I don't call myself Ukrainian blogger. You know, some people may not accept me, but there's a reason for that. It's because if I call myself a Ukrainian blogger, then I'm purely Ukrainian that came here and I'm blogging. There's, there's Ukrainians here that came to from Ukraine and they're blogging about they can compare life in Ukraine in here. I see that I see that them, 
the reason why I call myself Anglo-Ukrainian. Now, Anglo-Ukrainian, why is that? I'll tell you why. You can call yourself Anglo... Um, Saxon. No, 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 no. Anglo-Saxon is a, is a nation, but okay. um, and you, can call yourself, uh, you can call yourself Anglo-Nigerian. Now, the reason why is this is that, number one, is your, your parents have migrated here. You were born here. You can call yourself Anglo-Nigerian. Or you came here at a young age and you've, your life is the majority here. So let's say you lived in Nigeria for 20 years and you came and you lived here for 20 years. You can call yourself Anglo-Nigerian. So what is that Anglo? What, what is the real definition of that word? Anglo, Anglo means is that uh, Anglo is UK, Britain. So instead of you calling yourself British, because because even though I've got a British, I'm I'm, I'm British. I've got a British passport, but I'm yeah. like I'm like the, the reason why I call myself Anglo Ukrainian. It sounds nice, and also you, it's like a, de, um, a definite as well. Because if I say my, if I say to you I'm an Anglo Ukrainian blogger, you know straight away. Oh, he's Anglo, which is British, and he's got Ukrainian, didn't and he's a that. blogger. Did you know? That? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that I'm Anglo African. Yeah, you better recognize yeah. I'm Anglo African, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I'm using that. Yeah, because I don't listen. I don't de define myself English because Anglo. English. Um, um, uh, the way I see English is uh, English is people that have been living here for a very long time. The English, white English, um, thin British is people that have come here. They were born here. They've got other nationalities themselves. They maybe got a British boss like me. I'm not. I'm not English. I'm not Anglo. -Sang. I'm Slavic. Slavic is uh, other national nationality, as in Eastern European. You know. Uh, no, I think English is a way of life. British is the people. I well, think, as I'm thinking of it, English is there's and there's and there's old ways of life. There's an English way of life. There's an English way to do it. There's an English tenacity, mm. and then there's the British. Like mm. the British, British was like in the wars and all that. When everyone was here, everyone's fighting black, white, Americans. Uh, you, you, the people in Europe, whatever. But they were British. They they were British. You get what I'm saying? Mm. They come cut together. The English, English is like. Uh, Oh, oh. It's different to me. It's different. You see, it's slightly different. Do you know what I mean? The way I will perceive it. But this is, the, but this is the. I think we can have a debate about this as well. I think your audience, is, your audience, can tell us what the answer is because yeah, obviously please. different, different, different perspective. Because the way I see English is English whites. British, I see that as we're all different nationalities come here, born, mixed race. Even like my wife, my wife is uh, Vietnamese, right? She, okay. She, she came here at the age of uh, five years old. She considers herself as British because now she's got British. She lived all her life. She British, but she will never consider herself as English. That's it. Point blank. You know, I don't know. It's uh, It depends on the audience what they say as well. Your audience will say as well. Because the way I see British is that is the people that have come here, different nationalities, they were born here, married pe uh, people, and um, they've got a British passport. That's the way I see that's the way I see. I think that's how majority of people see it. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm just going live, just letting you know. So sorry, that's what I'm doing. I'm not I'm not, not listening to you. I'm gonna feel, I feel nah. like going a bit live during the show because you know No, that's all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could be live because yeah, that was I like that that bit there was really interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the difference between British and English. Yeah. Uh, we're going live with Oleg in the studio, just sit in the corner and just watch what's going on, please. Live talks. <laughs> How'd you turn this around? You know who's here. What's uh, Big Ola in the studio. <laughs> you know to put that. Can I put that over there? Sweet. That's enough. Yeah, yeah. Put that over there for the door. Sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. British English. Um, right. Race. What's that? No. Ukraine. Yes. Duh. Can we talk about what I do here for the Ukrainians? What what I do? We can what? talk about whatever you want to talk about. Well, let's let's get into that. Let's talk to that. And then yeah, let's get into that. All right, then um, I'm gonna tell you what I do for the Ukrainians here. Um, and why you do it? And why I'm doing it? Um, okay, I'll, I'll start with why. Uh, the reason why I do it is because I went through hardship here. Well, life was not easy for Ukrainians, especially if you you came here and you had didn't have the documents, the right documents to do what you're doing here. Now you got now a lot of Ukrainians have the documents that they have. They feel like more like British citizens with certain limitations and so of course. Um, life for Ukrainians was difficult here because there was not many m m massive communities here. Now, if there were many Ukrainians, they were hidden. You know, they would never, never, they would never speak Ukrainian language. They were afraid. Whatever the case is, yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of there was uh, certain Ukrainians open up certain restaurants here. Now, when they did open Ukrainian restaurants, people didn't even know what Ukraine was. If if you ask me, um, Olis, where you're from, and I say I'm from Ukraine, I have to explain to you what Ukraine is, and you will say, okay, Olis, just tell me what it is. And I say to you, as soon as I say Russia. You know straight away. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're cool. Russian, basically. Boom. That's it. You know, you define me as Russian, even though I said no, I'm not Russian. I'm Ukrainian. There's more than that, though, isn't it? There's more to that, right? Different culture, different blah 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 blah. You can see that how many Ukrainians are coming here as uh, Finn. Um, 
a lot of restaurants, Ukrainians will open restaurants, they will take a Lithuanian a bit of products, they will take a bit of Polish uh, products as well, because Lithuanian and Poland came here in 2004. They already... Um, got uh, infrastructure. Yeah, they got infrastructure. People have bought houses, uh, they're renting now, yeah. businesses, blah, blah, blah. They're going on the communities and stuff. They'll take that. Now, when the war started, um, a lot of Ukrainians dropped all their products and started selling only pure Ukraine. Because, you know, everything eyes are right when now. When you say the war started, the war with Ukraine and Russia. Yeah, which is full-scale invasion happened, obviously, last year, uh, February 22. Um, what, did, what, did that, what did that mean to you? And what was that to you? Because yeah, I I can't I don't know. What did that mean to you? What did it mean to your family? What did it mean? Because to me, it was just another war on TV that was happening, and it was happening to certain people. Like I'm not trying to belittle it in no, any no, way, no. shape, or form. But we live here. A lot of people live here in a bubble. A lot of people in the Western world, apart from like twin towers and little little things that happen, we don't really comprehend the, the atrocities and 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 the severe the, the, how severe war can be and the impact of it on our like because it's on the news right now. Like so, go on. I agree with you 100. Um... percent with this war you see when the war started first of all i knew this war was going to be a long time now why did i think it was a long time it's because of the bible prophecy for me uh daniel chapter 11 talks about the king uh the, the um the king of the north and the king of the south will be fighting which is we live in the end of times you know this the, the reason why we have all these problems in the world is because it's been prophesied thousands of years ago um and i knew the king of the north would be russia um, uh, King of the South would be Anglo-America Now Anglo-America is the last empire Not China may be rising but it will never be an empire That's the way it is I may be wrong, I may be right But I, I look at it from the Bible perspective um, And I knew this was going to be long And I knew what what's going on And I knew that you cannot destabilize Russia so easily It's a nuclear power state um, It's selling gas, it's selling a lot of oil It's selling a lot of different things to, to other countries Which um, is impacting the whole world stage as well And also you have to think about it The you got BRICS now. BRICS is uh, Brazil, Russia, China. BRICS. BRICS. Yeah, it's a unity. So you know, you got NATO. You got Union. Uh, Euro NATO. Union, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah you, you got. You, you got BRICS. You got the big, uh, big countries like you got Russia. You got China. You got Brazil. Uh, you got South from um, uh, South, Africa. South Africa. They got together. Now there's other countries that are going to be joining as well because they don't want. They want to get away from the uh, from the petrodollar. You know, now you know what the petrol dollar is. So if you want to, if I want to trade gold or petrol with you, I need to do it with American um, dollars. Yeah. That's why you go to every country. You can, if you want to trade, uh, change, dollars, yeah. change it to fin. They don't want that because I, when they sanctioned Russia so bad, because it's, it's the most sanctioned country in the world right now, uh, they realize that America has power. That means uh, has power to um, how can I say dictate dictate like the price of stuff, price and finances as well. So they said no, no, no. We don't, we don't want to deal with that. We want to have my own currency. So right now they're dealing with other countries, currencies that they want to make at the moment. This, this is this going on right now. Is something that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so when the war when the war started into uh, thing, it affected me. Why? Because remember, I've got ninety five percent of my family still live in Ukraine, but they're not as affected as it is in the east side of Ukraine. They're more to the west side of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, of course, it hurt. I remember the first two months; it was really painful. I remember in the, I used to come to work, watch the news. I came home and watched the news, and my wife would feel it. My wife felt that I didn't give um, the attention to my wife that she needs. You know, as women, women they need the attention from their husbands and so forth. Oh, bless you, and, uh, but my wife said to me, she said to me, she, she goes, babe, why don't you do something about it? You know, I mean, you're watching the news, it's great. You're okay, you get £500 as a donation, but you can do more. And in reality, I thought to myself, do I listen to her or do I just tell her, you know, go where you need to go? And she was donating as well. You donating money. Yeah, yeah, I donated, I, don't, I donated £500, but I knew it's not enough and I knew I can do more. Think about it. My job at the moment, I work for the NHS. Um, I work in the security. I work two days, two nights and four days off. Uh, those four days, I'm not really doing anything, right? I'm just in, sitting at home or going to the park, whatever the case. I knew I can do more. So I remember I... Um, I remember I posted a post on Facebook and this is where I went viral. I, I posted, I said to Ukrainians, I, I'm happy to help. Please call me. I've been living here for a long time. Duh, duh, duh. I never expected, um, I expected 20 people to come back to me. 169 messages came back to me. I exploded online when I replied to every single Ukrainian with my bad Ukrainian. That's why I started learning <laughs> Ukrainian as well. Because remember, I was yeah, always yeah, speaking yeah, in yeah. British. I was talking, talking in English yeah, all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then um, I realized people needed four problems. Uh, thing. Uh, work, uh, they needed employment, they needed accommodation, they needed to learn the language and they needed legal stuff. How does the country work four in common, legal stuff? Common, common, things. common problem. But what I saw is that uh, all the attention was to Ukrainians that come in here. And I thought to myself, what about the Ukrainians like us that have been here for a long time? We're important as well. We've got a story to tell of as course. well. 
So I started recording about UK, about about London, about East London, what kind of people live there, what kind of community, da, 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 like there's a lot of Asian live there, what's in South London. I actually beat, I would go to South London and kind of show the area. I went to West and would have, I never used to do that. Never used to do that. I never used to travel the whole of London. There were certain places I never traveled in my life, but I've been there because of this yeah. this war and because of the community. Good, 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 good. As I started growing, good. I opened a, a Telegram. Uh, many, many people may know what Telegram, I think it's the best, better than WhatsApp, way better. Um, I opened four, t uh, four Telegram groups, specifically for that order so if you're looking for work that's employment so i would walk around in yeah, certain areas in london i would walk around i would walk around certain uh, areas on london if i see an advertisement um in certain shops i'll take pictures and i'll send it and i will send it to on that group saying that's employment if you live in west london these are all the jobs for you there yeah. you know but i realized that i'm taking a lot of my energy doing it so i thought what's the best way to do so i would write emails to all these big companies in in uk i, mm. I even send an email to indeed massive thing i sent them i said this and i knew they would support me because of this ukrainian thing that's going on right now stand yeah. up for you right at right the time. right time a great yeah. opportunity to do so while i was doing this um i was looking for accommodation and i thought to myself hey i need to find a lawyer um so i called one lawyer that family friend and she said unfortunately i can't help you because i'm very busy da, da, da. ukrainian lawyer uh, ukrainian lawyer she said i'm very busy because there was no there was not such an influx before ukraine before she used to work with russian clients blah blah blah, blah whatever the case is and i thought to myself okay i need to find a lawyer and I eventually I found a lawyer and I said to him, hey, can I put you on this in this group? He said, yeah, fine. He dropped me in the group. Next day he calls me and said, wow, there's 200 people here. What do I do? And I said, listen, Mr. Lawyer, <laughs> find other lawyers <laughs> to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he yeah. started fit. And people started, and people stuff, started flushing. So what I started doing, I started uh, all these links that I get for these um, groups. I would post them everywhere. And people start coming, I start seeing, seeing, and I would post things, I would do content. And then I realized to myself, hold on a second, I'm burning a lot of energy. Let me call uh, a friend. So that's why I called Serge, as you know. Serge. <laughs> I called Serge and- um, He's a G, man, he's yeah, a G. Big uh, up, Serge. Serge. And I said, Serge, could you help me? And he said, yes, but he said, I can't do the marketing. I can't sell, I can't do what you do. And I said, what can you do? He said, let's create a site. So we created a this web. He does IT, by the way. He's an IT guy. Yeah. Serge is web. an amazing IT guy. IT guy. And he's Very so strong as well. Te technical guy. Stronger than Monica, um, So he opened a site. He worked was he was working on it two on um, two weeks. I remember when he came out. He came out like a dragon with his eyes and stuff like that. Um, anyways, he created a site and he said to me, Alex, listen, why don't we make a portal? Why don't we collect all the information for Ukraine? Because a lot of information was scattered everywhere and some information wasn't available. Let's either create that information or uh, scat, uh, get, gather all this information on one platform. And that's why we became, uh, We at the moment currently, we are the number one internet platform or information platform um, uh, portal uh, for Ukrainians in UK at the moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Number one, what's the name for uh, people, people who want to find it and get out there? So it's in three languages. It's in Ukrainian, uh, Polish, okay. and it's in English. Oh, um, you going to say Russian? Nah, no, we had it, but we had loads of hate from Ukrainians. So of like, course, uh, of course. If they fight, you're fighting against them. How dare yeah, you put that uh, no, so, no way. Uh, how to find us is just the right network, uh, ua.com. Um, as soon as you open it, you will see three, you can choose up to three languages. You'll find all the information right there. So we're, at the moment we're posting is news, blogs. We are, we blogs how it works is that we've actually opened a um opportunity for bloggers um doesn't matter if you're british ukrainian uh for you to put your blogs on our website uh for us it's great information and number two for you you can get our followers um uh, right now currently at the moment we've just checked our latest uh, data we have hundred thousand ukrainians uh go on our website every week that is huge that's massive progress we've never had that the highest the highest we've had was seven thousand. Um, now we have hundred thousand people coming in on a day, on on a weekly basis. It's huge. Uh, we've placed employment. Uh, we have uh, housing. So we've what we've done is that we've connected all Ukrainians that've been here living a long time, have their own businesses, have their own whatever the case, whatever business they have to be to be on our platform. Um, we're also working with a few British companies as well. We're also working with a few Ukrainians in Ukraine. We're also working with a uh, Polish company in Poland uh, that do a lot of, they send out a lot of Ukrainian artists all over names? Europe. Huh? Any of the names of these companies? Uh, back of my mind, I can't tell you, man. Okay, okay. but check out check out the portal. You can find this stuff out. Every, everything you can find on our, our, webs, our, our, our website. You can also advertise as well on our website as well. Because nice. um, we have a, such a massive audience. Uh, so what's that name again for me? Uh, NetworkUA.com networkua.com yeah. go and check it out yeah um um and also what i do is that i do interviews with ukrainians so for instance, i'll give an example a lot of ukrainians will say to me hey i was an accountant in ukraine how do i become an accountant here so instead of me finding that information on google translating and verifying it i find a ukraine that have been here for a long time who's actually working for a company or has his own business i say hey come over i'd like you to come over to my podcast or my youtube i also do youtube as well i make i bought my own cameras blah 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 Bam. on my own um and what i do i I do a lot of research about the person, um, just like yourself, Ayo. Um, I also um, ask 
ask my audience in the Facebook, Instagram, say, hey, what kind of questions would you like me to ask? And if there's, if you're an accountant, you will obviously definitely ask me in a question. And then I invite a person on my show and I ask him all the questions. Out. First of all, I start from you, your story. How did you come here? Because it's very interesting. I want you to tell because I'm not the only one that had a hardship that come in here. I want you to tell tell them as oh, well. Oh, life is life, bro. Yeah. So life you, is life. So like yourself, I, you'll come to my show and you'll explain to me how you do, 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 do. How you, I'm how, coming. When you invite me, I'm coming. How do you become- with subtitles, Ukrainian <laughs> subtitles. How do you become an accountant? Of it. Now, one of the things I do is also you can also bring documents with yourself, what licenses you need, where what websites you need, all that also placed on our website as well. What we also do is that not only that we do a video format of you, if you don't want to be on our video, we we have journalists that will actually will ask you questions on a text form and we'll post you on our website. Nice. So we give you that opportunity. You know, can I just say interrupt you just slightly? Like yeah. can I just say that because I'm hearing your story and everything, you do realise the, the impact you're having on your country and the fact that you was such a intelligent young man, mm. it has come to fruition that this is what your energy was for. Mm. This is this is what you're channeling, your challenge, challenge, you know you're putting it in one, yeah, yeah. I can't say the word, but you, do you understand what I mean? And everything happens for a reason and things happen how they're supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. And what you're doing is amazing. And you're not asking for anything back. I know you're not asking for nothing back because I, I talk to you on a regular basis. Your passion is just to help people, which is, you'll get something back. I don't know what it will be, but your passion is to help people. And anyone out there that, like this is, I'm sorry to stop you with this story, but anyone out there, Ukrainians, anyone out there watching you, watching what you're doing, watching what's going on, I, they need to know, and I'm going to tell them, my old family, Anglo-African, right, <laughs> that this is all for the greater good of the Ukrainians and the people that you're trying to help. Mm. You're, trying, you're really trying to help people, not trying to help yourself. You're trying to help people. And that's where your passion lies. Because because I, the thing is that I, I want Ukrainians to integrate here. You see, just like I did, you know, I had to integrate with other cultures. I want them to do the same thing. Now, it may be a bit difficult. I wouldn't say difficult for them. It's up to their choice now because there's more of them now. Now they can choose their own community. They can say, hey, you know what? I don't want to be living in that community. I don't. Want, I just want to be living in my own community. In reality, I don't want them to do that. It's their choice. If you want to live in your own community, that's perfectly fine. But I want them to integrate with other nationalities as well. That's what I'm trying You've to given do. Given the comprehension that it isn't as rigid as they thought it was, it isn't as 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 dark as they may have thought it was. They can out, actually go out there. Don't believe the stereotypes. Don't believe the hype. Actually, experience it for yourself. Yeah. And if as a human being you don't actually like like people from a certain demographic, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. You're entitled to your own opinion. Yeah. But don't base your opinion on 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 propaganda, on stereotypes, and things that you've seen on TV. That's what you. That's what I get from you. Yeah, and yeah. it's like you can grow. People don't understand. We're like every human's like a fucking coal. That's the only time I swore. I'm surprised I swore. I haven't been swearing much, have I? Yeah. We're like coals in a fire. The closer we get together, we can grow mm. and burn, and the fire will burn brightly. Mm. But if you're right there in the cold on your own, how the hell are you gonna? How the hell are you gonna grow? And I, I'm not gonna take away from your thing, but for Ukrainians in Ukraine and the people that are in that kind of mindset, if you were to look at the people that are helping within this conflict with what's going on, and also the people that will be your points of, of information when you come to this country, just the people that would actually be willing to help you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd be really surprised. And I won't yeah, yeah. say it, but you'd be you'd be surprised. You'd be like, wow, you'd be educated. But but I I want to say this, my my reputation so precedes me so big now is that I get phone calls, people will call me and people will pass my number around. You see, one thing I, I made a mistake in the beginning was I gave my number. Now, I've got two phones now. I carry <laughs> two phones now. My other number, I don't give it no, no one. But anyways, yeah. I, I gave that number. Now that number passes around. Now people know my reputation is the fact that I build a, a data, I build a foundation. I, I know this was going to carry on, right? I know people are going to ask me. I've, I'm building uh, connections at the moment where all the mechanics, I'm collecting everything that's Ukrainian here. And the reason why I'm doing that is that it's because it's, it's easier for them to speak to them in the Ukrainian language, right? Once they know English, they don't need me no more. They can go to other other sites for the Good. British community. Yeah. And they can, that's yeah. right. Right now, I'm just building whatever the case uh, for, for them What's as well. What's necessary? What's necessary at the moment? And, and I'll say this, I said it to many Ukrainians because I, I have haters now as well. And I to, I have, I'm going to say this, it's everyone, hate, everyone, Everyone can do what I do. It's just that the desire and uh, one person asked me a question. He said, why is it that you do what you do? And I tell them, pain, pain, boy. I went through some hardship. When, you see, when I went to school, I never had, um, um, it took me a lot of while to warm up to other nationalities. You know, That's a lot. Can we just, can we just repeat that, please? It was very hard. It was No, no. Took, why took you me. do what you do? What, because of pain. Pain gone because I never, um, I never had my own. I, I never, I never knew my com uh, well community is one thing, but I never knew identity. I didn't know who I was. 
like you know right now ukrainians are going through that battle who are they are they russian are they belarusian are they the ukraine how do we build that uh national how do we build that identity you know because we've always been dominated by another power another mm -hmm. empire just like the Afri africans have been going through the same thing a lot of africans don't even know who they are you know when they come yeah. here so they a lot of them, uh, um, i'd like to put that into context a lot they say a lot of uh african americans are displaced and yeah. some people some people have, uh, are dis are disconnected from their heritage and what they're supposed to be doing definitely and some people yeah then no, no, that's the truth and I, I never knew how it was i don't that's why i call myself anglo-ukrainian because i don't fully see myself ukrainian because a lot of ukrainians will not accept me and a lot of british people i mean english people will not accept me as well they say well you're not here for, you know you weren't born in this country blah 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 so i said myself you know what? i'm gonna be in the middle i'm happy to be in the middle i'm happy to represent ukraine but i'm also happy to represent one the british time. This is one time one time oh uh, no one, <laughs> one, time, one, one, one time right there right no, there. No. i'm fucking feeling you yeah. bro <laughs> seriously yeah seriously seriously thank you seriously thank you continue man thank you so i'm happy to be in the middle and i'm happy to create my own path and i'm happy to join other people that are doing the same thing that i am doing as well remember don't get me wrong i yes i'm i'm created a great platform but I'm, I'm like an amazon for instance right i'm an amazon in the fact that if you created an art community i will approach you and i say hey you're growing and we are great and we're happy to share our audience with you because your audience may be looking for the information that we have are you happy to join with us a lot of people said no to me and now people are coming up to me and say hey we would like to work with you now they can see the vision. you know now they, they see, see the vision, vision. they see the yeah. value and stuff like that which is great but don't get me wrong i cannot change the world you know i cannot change what i'm doing because that yes, requires a lot that we, we we all tried that. Many human beings in the past have tried to do you that. Changed it already. Well, you can. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, when I say I'm just in, uh, I'm optimistic. In, that's what I'm saying. In, so, in a, so, so I'm saying you can go on. In in a way, I have changed because I I like the fact that people call me and people text me and people tell me the problems and stuff like that, and I can direct them to the person. Like today, this morning when I was walking through the door, someone sent me a message saying, "Alex, I've got a problem with Visa. How do I do? It? Does do sponsors still exist? How do I do that? Thank goodness I've got lawyers now that's working with me, and I said to hey talk to that person and the lady comes to me says i i knew i can count on you and that, that's really nice people know that i i went to a party last year um last week i went to uh, another anglo ukrainian just like well, myself he's a, he's, you know, he's, a, he's an mc he, uh, mc he's, uh, his name is mc no limit he's um he does a lot of grime and he lives in south london anyways i went to his party and he Big up MC no uh, limit. and a lot of people a lot of people came to uh to the party anyways uh we had four people come up to me say olex because of you, you are our last hope. Yeah, we called you. You picked up, and I remember picking up the phone call at twelve o'clock at night. I could have went to sleep. I could have been doing my own thing, but I picked up. The reason why I picked up, like I told you, I had pain. I had pain because no one. My parents never had that. Mom, I remember my mom said to me. My mom said to me, uh, uh, "My name's Sasha." She goes, "Sasha." Sa yes, she goes, "Sasha." If me and your dad had someone like you back in '98 when we came here, oh. you would have saved us time, money. Oh, wow. There was no scammers. I said, "Mom, you have to understand it. The reason why I'm doing it also, I don't want them to be scammed. Because remember, now they're gonna get more scammed because the war. Remember, one thing you get scammed like an and an, an, as an immigrant, people are horrible. They're often, vulnerable. When when you're vulnerable, that's when the, the, the animals come, like the, the hyenas, and, the, and they just pick at the. It's horrible. People are don't, people are horrible. They're scum, but it happens. It does. It, happens. it does. Yeah, it happens, man. Sorry to cut you, but again, no, no, no. using the flow, man. I'm really feeling everything. Like you get me a bit emotional up in the place. But go on. Yeah, so um, that's what we do. See. We we try we try to fin, and eventually I would like to hit the British community. That's why I open TikTok um to do more in English language um to speak about it. But it's quite difficult because. As I speak with Ukrainians, I, I'm learning Ukrainian better now, you know, and I'm kind of forgetting the, I wouldn't say I'm not, I'm forgetting the English language, is that I'm so conscious of it in that mentality. Um, but when I'm in that mentality, I also tell them, listen, please do not forget that we are in UK, learn English, start integrating with other nationalities as well. So can I, uh, can I suggest something then? Yeah. Can I suggest something? I don't know if, I, don't, I think sign language is universal. Mm. Um, sign language, I think sign language is universal, is it? Is it not? Is there no English, Chinese, what it is? It's sign language is sign language, right? Um, I think so. But um, why don't you, in your portal, reach out for a, a, a translator that is really good, because you're not that great at it, that is really good at it, and get them to work with you and what you're doing for the love of Ukraine, mm -hmm. to, to enable the information to be in Ukrainian and British. Like, so that's what we're reaching out now. You reach out on your show as well for someone from Ukraine who's got an extensive knowledge of the language who can then help you translate it also um, put subtitles on it as well because like, the message is it needs to get across had I not invited you down had we not encountered each other where we encountered each other we wouldn't be having this conversation now mm. and I, I pose to you you've changed your world because you've changed certain things in me so if I know if I'm thinking differently then my that my different thinking now goes on and touches someone else and someone else and someone else that's a change in the world bro yeah. and then it's the same vice. we don't know who's watching this 
the Ukrainian just you know what I was thinking it's about black people but you know what I'm going to give the next black person I see a chance yeah, well, I'm going to yeah, put yeah. that to the side and I was thinking that, and I, I was thinking oh why does everyone caring about Ukrainians and they don't care about us black people this person I'm going to put that to the back burner and look at what's going on in Ukraine and look how hard it has been for them and because they're a small community and look at the problems they see Do you know that's a change I, uh, this, bro this is, this is another thing you're saying as well is that uh, I agree with you there's a lot of uh, attention going to the Ukrainians at the moment blood like there and the media thing and I tell this to Ukrainians many times, I said, you have to appreciate the things that UK is giving you. I mean, the, the support that you guys are having now is amazing. No other uh, refugees had that. Afghans, Syrians, other they never had that. Why is Ukraine? Because that's a question thing. Why is Ukraine? Because I, I started thinking to myself, why do Ukrainians get so much support? Is it because we are fighting Russians? Because it's a uh, superpower? Is it because war is in Europe? Because maybe the Europeans are afraid that as soon as Ukraine breaks down, it may go to them as well. Over here, yeah. You know, it's, I, I'm, I'm thinking, but then again, I'm thinking to myself, Article 5, you know, NATO says, if you attack one country, you're attacking everyone as well. You know, so, but then again, would they ever fight Russia with nuclear weapons so much? No, he wouldn't because... He, Everyone be fucked. Everyone's messed. If they, from, they drop the bombs, no one wins. Yeah. No just, one wins. It's just all threats and all that. No one wins. The minute that happens, everyone loses. I mean, we're all losing already because through overconsumption, segregation, the the, the the religious wars, the wars that are going on over over um resources that could be shared normally and amicably if we could behave amicably. But if that if that happens now, that's it. It's a wrap, bro. We, it's a wrap. We can't, there's no way. We, we I don't see it happening, you know, but who am I? We, we can't. Uh, I, things are going to get worse. Uh, for, look, for Amazon to be as big as it is now and the, the services that it's providing, they need to consume. They need to consume. They need to consume as much as possible. And to be consumption, it's also, if you think about it, it's greed, right? Consumption Too consumption much. is greed and consumption is, is the, 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 the equation to me is consumption equals destruction of the human race mm. and you've got what we spoke about in this interview already about having not having the patience to to slowly watch your bread bread bake yeah. you want it now yeah. and then when you get it now you don't want it anymore you want the next thing so that becomes uh, obsolete or eyesore that's just there in the past another pile of pile of pile of food the amount of food wasted in this country the amount of people starving in the world it's, it's a joke mm. do you know what I mean the amount of things that we use and throw away it's a joke the way we we've known about climate change and we're fucking up the planet for years but people are still doing it like it's a joke yeah. it's a joke bro but it's just it's an ongoing joke and the joke's on us humans and we're all black white green blue we're all gonna suffer at the end of this this punchline's gonna punch us all in the nuts i like i like what michael jackson said and he said one of his songs he said man in the mirror is you right you have to change if you want to change the world you need to change start from yourself i also like maya maya angelo maybe you've heard of her she's an african-american uh, poet uh, she said something very wonderful. My favorite quote, uh, and this is something I, will, I teach Ukrainians, that people do not care what you say to them. People do not care what you, you, you do for them. People remember how you made them feel. Emotions are very powerful. If I make you feel comfortable, you will always come back to me. This is something in my organization I say to, um, I do for Ukrainians, that I try to make your life in UK as comfortable as possible because you will always remember me. If you remember someone by comfortability, no matter what country you go, you will say, hey, I know on organization network you are. Go to Sasha Kozak or Oleksiy Y Kozak. He does this, he does that. It's comfortability. Also think about like, this eye as well. When you, go to a when you go to a shop, right? When you're buying when you're buying food, right? Sometimes you buy it with your emotion. You don't think logically. You buy it, you think to yourself, and then you come out at the end and you think, oh, why the hell did I buy that food? You know, just because at that time, at that moment, you were feeling that emotion. That's why emotions are very, very, very powerful. Yeah, yeah I, I, I totally concur with what you're saying. I was going to say something and, uh, and, and, and I lost it. Oh no, um, Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Like, just in line with what, what you were saying. And the emotional thing is serious. We all, as human beings, feel emotions at different given times. That thing that we associate with food is definitely, it's on point. Like I eat like fish and chips. I like certain things that I used to eat in cake and custard and stuff. I, I love them, but there's certain feelings I get from them. My learned friend, um, Albert Johnson, taught me about how we tie our emotions to our food and how certain things bring us to certain states of mind and like we just do it subconsciously. We don't realise that like, and it, it, it's serious. Go on. I want to add as well another thing as well, leaders. Uh, we talk about leaders quite a lot. You're a leader in your field, I'm a leader in my field, right? I would say it's something, um, sometimes we cannot become leaders in certain fields is because we are not destined to work in that environment that we work in. I don't know if you know this, but maybe for your audience to know is that 76 or maybe just under 76% of the world in this world don't like doing the jobs that they do now. And the reason why is, the reason why they're in a the job is because either you're married, you have kids, and, and the big factor is the kids that's holding you down or mortgages. Um, I would say that 
if you're working in that field that you're working, the reason why you're not becoming a leader is because that job is not made for you. You need to find a job that or the thing that you love, you'll become a leader thing. I love blogging. I love vlogging. I love doing podcasting now. And thanks to you, Ayo, you said to me, you, I remember you said it's clear, take that podcasting under your thing. Take it, it's yours, isn't it? And I thought to myself, man, I started really thinking about it. And then I, I actually, when I made my first one, I realized, wow, it's such a such an enjoyable thing because first of all, it's another format, right? And podcasting is not an interview. It's it's a discussion. You talk about it. Sometimes you go away from this discussion, you come back and you start mm -hmm. talking about it. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can, um, sometimes when people even ramble, there's a lot of information you can pick up from that rambling mm -hmm. because there's a lot of words that they use and send yeah. contacts. They may say, say, well, that information that might be useful. I may use that in the future, so. Uh, thank you, bro. You're welcome. And my thing is, this why this has been. This is why it, it, people are asking why I do this and how come it's doing what it does. It flies because it's therapeutic for me, and I I learn every time I talk to someone. I learn. Given I'm a human being, so sometimes my frame of mind isn't always the same when I go into a room to have a podcast with people. But when I leave, it's usually around the same place. I feel enlightened. I feel lifted. I feel empowered by um, the conversations we've had, and this is what it is for me in life and what we're talking about now. I, if you meet me out there, trust me, step to me and talk to me, you'll see the man I am. Um, I believe that every human being should be like this and should do this and this is how we'll grow. If we're willing to have conversations, we, we, you can have inhibitions, you can have certain things like once bitten, twice, like certain things we put, it is what it is, you know? Like, mm. But still, when you're prepared to have a conversation with a human being across you and first and foremost, see a human being and have the conversation and then base your, your opinion on what is being said and how you're being treated, that's what life's about, bro. Because mm. you never know who can educate you or, 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 or enhance you. And you never know who you can help. And you never know what story you're going to tell. You never know what picture you're going to take out of it. You never know. Yeah. And, but one thing I do know, you can't do everything on your own. Yeah. And when you're, when you're in your own head and stuff, things can seem freaking like bigger than the Eiffel Tower or, the, mm. or Mount Everest or whatever. But then when you communicate to someone else, you realise they're going through the same thing or they've realised they know someone who's gone through or they can give you the, the, the right words for you to yeah. like put your, your snow boots on and climb that motherfucker. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like what you're doing for the Ukraine is amazing. God bless you. Thank you. God bless Serge. God bless your whole company. God bless everyone who interacts with you. Thank you. And I wish you all the best. I hope it grows. I hope this stupid war ends across the world. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? We, we get hold of ourselves. As bad as it's going to be, I hope people get a hold of themselves and understand what the fuck, what, what life's about, yeah. what they should be doing. Yeah. And even if the leaders don't, like the, the people on the ground, because we're the ones who make things happen, you know, like, they pull the wool over everyone's eyes and they're constantly doing that. The minute, brush your head. Yeah, the minute the minute they uh the minute we put it off and we start knowing what's going on, they're fucked. What's why it's a consistent thing, the conspiracy consistent, you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you a couple of questions from my book, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got before the other in uh, other people come, yeah. But I want um I want um because I just saw something, I want people to understand this, yeah. Understand this, yeah. Give me a hand. Yeah, right there, that right there. This this right here is solidarity. You see the difference in color? Yeah, yeah. But we're the same inside. That you don't don't be confused. It's, I'm not, this is not a joke. We're the same inside. He's a man, I'm a man. I want to do good things for my human beings and my community. Oleg, Sasha, so do you. Like, and this is power. I'm telling you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless everything you Thank do. You. God bless Ukraine and God bless the human race. Come on, I'm, I'm it's serious, bro. I want to. I want to say my last respect. Respect. Um, I know you're gonna ask me a few more questions. I'm gonna ask uh, to your audience is that please uh, like, um, like, comment, subscribe, and share his uh, podcast Thank to you. other to your friends. Thank um, you. Please do not forget uh, to hit that subscribe button. Please uh, make sure you um, follow him on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and I'm sure um, YouTube. Definitely YouTube because obviously sure video is a thing. Uh, please share it to other people as well because it definitely changes other people's um, opinions and lives as well. If you enjoy his episodes and you think that his ep one of his episodes is great, that you think, of course, his episodes are definitely titled to that co conversation that he's speaking with his host, post it to other friends as well. It definitely okay. changes people's lives. And who knows, he may invite you and you may share the same story like myself and many other people before you. Uh, share the story and podcast is one of the wonderful thing man if you've never done it before do it man i recommend everyone to do start doing podcasts man it's amazing come on <laughs> hold it give me three now back, back, back. <laughs> come on come on right let's see what questions we can get before we get our last get when the next guest comes in so mm. this is just strictly about you now we're talking mm. about you as human beings you answer however you want whatever pops into your head okay. bam 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 okay. right so what's the best thing you've ever seen um Putting a, uh, putting a diamond ring on my wife's finger. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely. How'd that make you feel? Oh, it made me feel good, man. 
Uh, oh. Especially the wait, man. It was seven years before I got married to her, man. Bless you. Patience. Bless you. Bless you. What's your wife's name? Uh, Trudy. Trudy. Yeah. Lovely, 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 lovely. I'll start singing a song. It's not, it's not the same name, but there's a film called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Have you heard that film? I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. But in there, the kids see it and it goes, truly scrumptious. No, no, You're no. truly, truly scrumptious. No. I can see you singing that to your wife. Bro. Come on. <laughs> I'm a bad um, singer. I'm a bad singer, man. I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something about you. No one knows. We can go back if you can still think about that. I'll think about it. Um, your favorite quote? Mm. I think you've given it to me, but you can go ahead and give it to me again. Yeah, Maya, Maya Angelo. Uh, people, people do not remember what you say to them, and people do not remember what you do for them. But people remember how you made them feel. Nice. Advice to your younger self: Be more courageous. Take more risks. Nice. Um, what's your first love? Hmm. I think it would be Trudy. She, oh, man. Yeah, she's my sweetheart, um, my childhood sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, if you were a colour, mm. what colour would you be and why? I'd be blue, man. Why? Uh, blue is my favourite colour. Um, blue is also associated to the sea. So if, if anything, if I was running from the police, whatever, i just uh, <laughs> go to the sea or whatever the case is. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> if I was, for whatever reason, running from the police, I'm fighting for Ukraine, man. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, blue is everywhere as well, you know. <laughs> yeah, sky blue, sea blue. I like yeah. that. I like that. I like that. I like that. What's your favourite film or TV show? Uh, my favourite TV film, um, show, I would say My Wife and Kids. I okay. Like, uh, I like that. My favorite film, um, the one that associates to me the most, um, especially with my old journey, I would say Titanic. Titanic. Okay. Uh, nice, 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 yeah. nice. You like you like the Caprio? Or just it's a story. It's a story. I like the story, but I like the fact that uh, there was loads of space in that wooden thing. He could have survived, you know, or at least yeah. swap over, you know, five yeah. minutes there, fifteen, you know. But yeah. it's, 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 it, that actually dictates or depicts. Di 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 the plight that, he, that men have in the world like the woman had space but she didn't want to put him on there. she yeah. loved him but she didn't love him enough to... <laughs> wow wow um, what's your you're, you're, you're a romantic at heart aren't you I was I don't think about now uh, after this war that's changed me no I I still think you're a romantic because you want I just it's just my interpretation what I get from you talking to you you want better. You're still believing they can be better. And you're working towards making better. You're not. You're not doing this stuff for money. You're doing this stuff for love, for, for solidarity of your country. That's a romantic. Uh, romantic. What's the word? That's a romantic. What's the word? Romantic reason. Yeah. I want to say something more elaborate, yeah. but that's a romantic reason. You Let's can say like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you had one wish, mm. what would it be? If I had one wish, I'd wish for. Um, uh, for better health in, uh, for everyone in this world. My G, it's a good fucking answer. Good answer. The afterlife, do you believe in it? And if you do, what do you think it would be like? Mm, I believe in, um, if, when it comes to afterlife, I believe that, I think there's going to be a resurrection in this earth. I think the world is, um, I think people should live here on this earth forever. But obviously without, um, without all this greedness and badness that they have in the heart, because if you've got greedness and badness, it'll start to, um, it's going to be back to status, um, square one again. Yeah. yeah. Um, in, this is, in an apocalyptic world, mm. would you want to die in the initial, like whatever creates the apocalypse, or would you want to live in the aftermath? And that's quite a funny question, considering what we've spoken about nuclear war. <laughs> I would, um, I'd like to live in a in the, in that other world to challenge myself, man. What's it going to be like? The scavenging and stuff like that. All the, yeah. you know that Mad Max that we see and stuff like that. That's that's going to be yeah. that'll be wonderful. But yeah, why not challenge myself? Okay, okay. Um, first fight, first kiss, first fight, fondest childhood memory. What's your fondest childhood memory? Uh, kids uh, playing outside, um, everyone coming out as a community outside, um, eating sunflower seeds and sitting on these benches. I, I, I like that. Last time I went to Ukraine, there was no such thing as that no more because TV and internet took over and people are just more uh, always working all the time. People are more stressed out than it was back years ago. People maybe never had anything that they have now, but people were much more friendly. Now people have everything Happier. and they're not, ha they're not happy. Yeah. yeah. So they don't, in, in, in actual fact, they think they have everything, but they have nothing. 
No, they don't. Yeah, ma- 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 materialistic things, honestly, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, v- uh, it depends on what you value, but materialistic things do not make you happy. Cool. It, um, I want to go back to this. No, yeah, I want to go. There's a question that I should have asked yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's this like we got to one. That one afterlife. And what do you think it would be like? And if if you could, would you haunt anyone? Who would you haunt? <laughs> <laughs> I, I if I had to haunt someone, no, if you could haunt anyone, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can say I wouldn't haunt anyone. But if you would, if you could haunt someone, is there someone you'd haunt? And who would you haunt? Uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't have enemies, man. Uh, at the moment, at the moment, I don't have enemies. Maybe if someone did something bad to me now, and I probably would uh, would haunt them. But I'm not the type of person to give revenge because. It, it will never satisfy me. Cool. I don't want to take away from what you said, but I see haunting in so many different ways. Haunting is like tormenting them and that. No, but no. I, I see also haunting is like forcing them to do stuff they wouldn't necessarily do. So when you're haunting them, when you know you can kind of push them in a certain way, you go, they're going somewhere, you go, and they go that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you know that, but you make them do good things. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you this all to myself. No, you go, go, okay, who wants a piece of this? You know, <laughs> like you haunt them into No, 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 no. Um, you, you asked me the last question before, what is it that I regret? Um, is that the question you asked me? Um, yeah, go on. You can ask, what's, what would you be your biggest regret if that's, yeah. Uh, no, I've, I've, go on, tell me something uh, about I, th- I think my biggest regret would be that I never, never was, um, I gave up too easily. Uh, that is the biggest thing I regret. I think I never, um, I could I could have achieved a lot more in life. No, I'm, talk- I'm not talking about success. I'm talking about certain things I could have done more in life um, if I never gave up so easily. Um, I see now that, Everything that we do, if you believe, if you honestly believe in something now, the thing that makes you um, get there, it's not just the opportunity, because all of us had the opportunity when COVID happened here, but no one took us to go uh, film because we never had the desire, whatever the case, money, connections, but it's the consistency. You need consistency, whatever you're doing. If you really truly believe what you're doing, consistency is the key to your happiness and your success. Mm, mm, I like that. Um, 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 um. Okay, I'm going to ask this question and go back because I know the other, the other answer is going to be really deep. So, no, two questions. <clears throat> how would you describe yourself? Mm. Um, how would you describe yourself? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm very charismatic, uh, very big on energy. Um, very, I'm very high influential. So, um, I'm very, my favorite color is blue, but I love orange because it brings that so, uh, social um, and society. If, if I was a Myers-Briggs, um, you would check me out on disc. I'm very high influential. Um, a high, very high energy. Nice. If you were an animal, mm. what animal would you be? I'd be a penguin. Why? Uh, why a penguin? I like that. I'm, penguin. I'm, I'm already tall as it is, but I like to be a penguin because penguins are very smart um, on, wat- on, on the water, but very slow on land. Same as me. I'm very slow in uh, swimming, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fast on land. Um, but the reason why I like pe- penguins is because, uh, first of all, we don't hardly see hear everything about penguins. Bec- uh, the only time we hear about penguins is when David Attenborough comes up on, um, on, on BBC and starts talking about it. Uh, but penguins are very smart, very swift. Um, they evade a lot of uh, predators. You don't have sharks, uh, but killer whales and polar bears. And seals and pol- uh, polar bears as well. But it depends on what penguins, yeah. Then again, actually all penguins kind of get haunted by all these animals. But I just, I don't know. I was going to say a lion because lion is my favorite animal, but I thought everyone chooses lion. So I thought, why not choose a penguin? Because it's something about swiftness about penguins. Cool, cool, cool. So now, um, during this thing called COVID, mm. I know, and I don't, I don't, I don't really end on this, but you had a near death experience, didn't you? Yeah, I, um, I took um, AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. Um, I survived. Um, I got blood clots in my lungs. I'm taking morphine for the rest of my life. Um, I remember. I, rem- I remember going to the hospital and um, I was sweating. I-, I didn't know I was sweating. I was breathing very bad. So every time I took a, a breath in, it's like uh, you could feel like a snake um, uh, like making, Marcus, like squeezing, you. squeezing, yeah. 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 And the nurse, t- thank goodness, I work in the hospital. Um, and the nurse took me in straight away to A and E. Um, they said, you're going to stay in a hospital at the time when you got blood clots. I remember five doctors came in. I had two consultants come in in the next day, three doctors. And she said, good news is that, um, the good news is that you don't have COVID, but the bad news is you got, you got blood clots in your lungs. Uh, you're going to have to stay in a week in a hospital. And I stayed in a week and they gave me all these injections I need and I'm warfarin. And it changed my life. I'm, I'll never be the same how it is before, but I'll say this uh, to the audience. I do not blame the vaccine. I blame uh, the lifestyle I was le- uh, leaving then. I used to drink a lot. I used to smoke. Um, I don't. I don't do none of that anymore. Um, life experience. Good, good, good. I stopped drinking last November, mm. and I hope to never drink again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Mm. Oleg Sanchez. San- Sancha? 
סאשה, אולקס, אולקס יו איי קוזאק, you can call me. say again? אולקס יו איי קוזאק. אולקס יו איי קוזאק. יא, קוזאק. אנגלו, אוקראיניאן. בלוגר, בלוגר, יא. בלוגר, בלוגר, בלוגר. אם יש לך משהו שאתה רוצה להגיד לפני 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 שאת